Did that fix anything? Can people hear me now? I don't know if that's going to necessarily fix it, but uh, let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, you're you're out. Okay, I now. think this I is the you. this is my less good audio. I think. Um, I don't know why my good mic is not is not porting in properly, but it shouldn't be horrible. I'll I'll fix it later as long as you can hear me now. That's good. So, uh, do you see the? Uh, we yes. Some yeah. I'm, with I'm video fixing feeds. the. <laughs> Nikhil, talk. <laughs> We're fixing. Hello, everybody. It's I'm still here. It's I, me forever. Need... Oh, look, we have artwork. That's yeah. Hilarious. Okay. I've... Let me. Uh, oh, I like how. We... Oh. Let me fix this last this last little problem with the camera feed here. Yo, we were doing so good. How many people? We're... Oh, there's over 200. I'm sorry for all the tech problems, yeah, everybody. No. This will not be a regular thing. I'm. Uh, I'm. I threw all of this. As you can tell, we're very I prepared. Threw literally we were all, set yeah. for this for weeks. Okay, no, I'm, I'm going to blow that out. I threw all of this together yesterday. I made the logo. I had some help with the graphics. I did all the stream setup. Literally all of this was done by me yesterday. So we're doing 543 people. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Oh, okay. And now Panda's really, now Panda's really small. It seems that my options are to make... Uh, here, 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 here. I know how I can fix this. I just move this down under that, and then that should fix it. Okay. Again, these are all problems that once once we have them done. Hi okay. I got to deal with all my, my Twitch stuff. Thank you to the level three hype train. Everybody's given a ton of stuff. I'm seeing a billion first-time chats, way more than I've ever seen before. Lots of subs. Hello to everybody. So, real quick, let's get some housekeeping things done, because this is... Huge for chat. There are 858 people in here. Welcome to all of you. So, if you've never been to my Twitch before, which is Jesus. the vast majority of you, welcome. Thank you for being here. I am amazed that we have this many people on here so far because I haven't sent out any announcements or anything. People were just ready. So, thank you all for that. Uh, I did make a TikTok like five minutes Okay, ago, yeah. Nikhil, I, Nikhil I made a TikTok. Uh, there are, uh, this for people who have been here before, again, which is like 10% of you, uh, there are new subscriber emotes of the character art. Those little uh, those little icons that you see for everybody's characters, except for mine yet. Uh, those are new subscriber emotes, so we have those set up. There's also one more. There will be more added later. Um, okay, so all the video seems good. All the audio hey. seems... Hmm? Uh, Matt, are you, are you able to move down that black box with the pink outline? Uh, I can expand it, yeah, and that should, yeah, it should fix it, yeah. Background. Yeah, because... Yeah, because it's cover. I can see the bottom of Nikhil's video uh, under it. Okay, uh, here, I'll, I'll expand it out a little bit, and that should fix it. Which, again, it's going to be screwy, but then I'll just expand the camera feeds a little bit. And that should be... The problem, for some reason, Skype is wanting to have your your feed and Nikhil's feed as, as different sizes, and I really do not understand why. Um, but... I might be... Well, it might be because I'm using... Nikhil, are you using a yeah, webcam, or are you the, using the a... Mac camera. All right, I have a uh, like a Canon okay. camera set up, so I think this is like an ultra wide screen or something uh, in that. comparison to. Hold on, I broke everything. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how Mac cameras work. Okay, I, I, that should fix it. That should fix it. It's not. It's not a big enough. It's also, not a big enough I'm, problem that you. I'm turning the main camera right? onto me, which I have to do manually. But there we go. Level five hype train. Thank you to everyone who's given up. We're at a hundred and. 60% level 5 hype train. I really appreciate everybody who's given stuff. You're making my my immense amount of time worth it. So, Damn, it's a no, like, like no joke, That's I think that's enough to meet. I just got to do time, which tomorrow will fill. Anyway, uh, Momo will be joining us at some point. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when, but at some point halfway through uh, this session. Muso will be joining us as a regular starting next week. So if you're here for Momo or Muso, Muso's coming and Momo is coming later today. Uh, Panda ruined the overlay, uh, the overlay with his tryhard setup. Yeah, it's Panda's fault, not me, for doing this <laughs> yesterday. It's always uh, my fault. That is. Okay, so we got follow. a lot of people in here still, way more than I was expecting. So, unless uh, Nikhil or Panda have any sort of questions or anything. Let's get into it. Let's let's start the session. Can't Is wait. everyone ready? Okay, I got a little uh, a little intro thing right here. I don't have any uh, any like maps or anything yet. There will be maps of all the places later, but 
I haven't had time. We do have character art, which you'll see in a minute. So, I hope you guys have little character descriptions ready, because uh, I'll, I'll toss it over to you at some point soon for, for your, little, your little character blurb. But, let's begin by talking a little bit about where this campaign is going to be taking place, which is the land of Vontral. Now, many, many years ago, many centuries ago even, the land of Vontral was racked by a series of earthquakes, which left giant rifts cracking the ground, many hordes of monsters pouring out of them. But the monsters were beaten back by a mysterious order of warriors and monks called the Symmetris Brotherhood. Only by the will of the Symmetris Brotherhood was the land saved, or at least that's what the stories say. Again, this was many, many centuries ago, and in modern Vontral, most people just dismiss these stories as propaganda for a brotherhood that has become corrupt and taken a lot more control of the world than it should have. But regardless of whether those stories are true or not, our story begins in a place that is very rare as it is not under the watchful eye of the Symmetris Brotherhood. That would be the town of Lauderton, or as its unfortunate inhabitants have nicknamed it, Slaughterton. See, Lauderton was once a fairly normal town, but uh, things changed years ago when a necromancer by the name of Eovard the Malignant made his base shortly, out, or, uh, shortly outside of the village. Now, obviously, having a necromancer nearby was not great for property values, and therefore the uh, reputable inhabitants of Slaughterton moved away, leaving only the people who appreciate the town's lack of law enforcement. And it is this specifically that has brought our first hero to the town. Panda, introduce your character. So, Glib is the world's unluckiest being. That is his deal. He used to be a human training to be a wizard, but he cheated on a test of trying to create water and accidentally got himself cursed by an old god. Uh, because of that, he is now a Kraken Warlock, and on his way out of the school that he was expelled from for cheating on one of the simplest spells to cast, he was also attacked and bitten by a vampire. Meaning that he is a frogman. Oh, by the way, he went from being a human to being a frogman because the teacher got pissed off that he cheated, so she changed him into a being that... Are we back? Are we back? We should be back. We should hopefully be back. We should be back. We're back. Are we good? That's going to screw up editing the VOD. Uh, no, you're offline. G give it a you're second. Offline. Give it a second. It'll it'll take a minute to, to bring to bring back. Back? Okay. Okay. I think it literally just crashed because we have, I've never had this many people before. Uh, I'll. In the Twitch. This is almost a thousand people. I, yeah. No, I, guys, for comparison, I had like maybe an average of 40 viewers before this and it doubled, it went up by like gotcha. 20 times. So. We should hopefully be good. Uh, yeah, we're not. We're, we're not, not back, back yet. yet. People are no. The count's going up. Like we're at almost a minute since we crashed. Yeah. The uh, it, it should be good. It says it. See, refresh the page. Can you hear me? Can you hear us too? Oh, I'm refreshing it. Yeah. Oh, wait, okay. We're back. It says we're back. Refresh and they come back. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Fixed it. Let me send. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Let me. Okay, let me just say refresh page, and then that should fix it. We might want to get a more stable setup. I'm after this. working. I'll, yeah, I'll do. I will do my best. It'll be much better. The rest again. Of this is. We'll you see how you see how fucking unlucky yeah, Glib that's, is. He crashed. It was on purpose. It was. Stream. It was on purpose. It was Glib's thing. Anyway, I'm a. I'm a backtrack to uh to where we were before when when Panda finished his character intro. So. Glib has been brought to Slaughterton on a mission because, as we know, Glib is very unlucky. He literally just crashed our stream, which is, I think, going to be a, a bit from now on. So, uh, Slaughterton has recently gone through a bit of a power shift as Eovard the Malignant, the necromancer who sort of caused the downfall of the village, has been deposed. A party of adventurers stormed into his fortress, took him out once and for all, the whole deal. Uh, but Eovard had a lot of valuable stuff in his fortress, of course, and so Glib has been brought to Slaughterton hoping to check the markets for any magical artifacts that have been looted, I mean reputably reclaimed, from Eovard's fortress, which hopefully, in theory, might be able to help him with his predicament. So, Glib, 
We're starting off the RP session now. You have found yourself in one of Slaughterton's markets. It's a fairly standard medieval market, albeit a little bit dingier than your, your, your regular one because Slaughterton's not a very nice place. But I'm going to start you off with the first roll of the game and sort of give you a little tutorial on how this works. So I want you to roll a perception check. So take d20. You can do this digitally. You can do this physically. I don't really care. Roll it and then add whatever okay. your perception bonus is. All right, I got a six, and then perception is. Uh, you should be able to do this in D and D Beyond as well, and it should plus uh, one seven. seven. Okay, I got seven. so seven. It's not plus. Yeah, seven. it is it a is seven, seven total. Final. So the general idea of this is that you know higher numbers better, lower numbers are uh, not as good, and ten is around your average. So seven is a slightly below average thing. So let's say. Glib's, Glib's a little bit lost. He's not completely lost. He's been in areas like this before, but the environment of Slaughterton is very different than the magic school that he somewhat recently came from. So you can see some stores that maybe have some magical items in them. You're seeing a lot of food stands that are super reputable, a lot of clothing stands that are sort of selling maybe fake wares and things like that, but a couple possible magic stands. So at this point, it is fairly up to you. You can kind of go wherever you want, but to start off, you notice a, an older man at a stand that seems to be selling magical artifacts kind of eyeing you and, and staring you down a little bit more than the other people. Okay. Uh, what time of day? Uh, let's it? say it's like, uh, let's say it's just like now, mid-afternoon, around 4 p.m. Okay. So, um, so that means I am hood up. I'm also like three feet tall, so I'm at most mm -hmm. people's waist, and this guy is staring at me. Um, can I just yell out? Hey, you can, you can, you can do <laughs> pretty much whatever you want. This is the the role play section. Yeah. So as I, my, my sort of go-to line I'm is, no, I'm yeah. trying to think of... my sort of go-to line here is <laughs> you can do whatever you want. You are not guaranteed to have anything work. That was the wrong answer. Okay. There we go. Um, Can I, can I wave at the old man? I'm used to people looking at me because I know yeah. I'm weird. Yeah, so you, you wave at the old... Is it like a like a sort of awkward wave? Is it a genuine happy wave? What are, what Definitely are we awkward. It, a very confused, like, hi, uh, I get it. Just like a, a, a wave of okay. shrug to, to see the So reaction. the man, at, the, at seeing your confusion, the man gets a smile on his face that seems maybe a little a little sinister. He kind of beckons you over, you know, with a, with a big cheesy salesman's okay. grin. All right. Um, yeah, I'll go, I'll go over there. Uh, I'm going to be very hesitantly. I'll go right, over so, there. Uh, just, to, just to say yeah, hi. So you go over to the stand and you see what seems to be a, a wide array of, of various artifacts. There's sort of, you know, wands, crystals, some like like eyes in a jar, just things that you your brain automatically goes to when you think of magic. And the man kind of leans over, leans okay. over his stand and looks down at you because he's fairly tall, taller than you at least. He goes... Hello there, young man. Can I help you out today? You seem a little lost. Um. Uh. Why? 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 Yes, sir. I. I. I seem to need a. Uh. An a amulet of unfrogging, if if you have that at your stand, perhaps. Did you say un unfrogging? And he kind of looks looks closer at you and rubs his eyes, <laughs> and just pauses. He seems to not have realized. <laughs> what exactly you were until you came closer and just looks he real he gotcha. now the, the script has been flipped as it were and he is he is the confused one uh, um okay uh so i'll take down my hood cuz cuz my little character i think he's got his hood on and stuff and go uh yeah it's for a friend for a, for a friend yes okay well <laughs> Well, fine, young man. I have something that you can work with here. He still seems a little bit, a little bit flustered, uh, but he sort of gets a little bit of his salesman okay. persona back, and he kind of ducks down behind the desk, and he pulls out uh, yeah. a necklace. So you ask for an amulet. He pulls it with a little, a little green stone uh, on the center of it, and he kind of holds it out. Okay. Like, what do you think of this? <laughs> uh, it seems shiny, but it doesn't. 
that doesn't seem very oh, magic. Is it, is it magic? I would think that some sort of spellcaster of your caliber would be able to see the value in this incredibly rare item. Okay, do ah shit. Do I have any like second spell so stuff? So you do I have, have a, a skill. I be, uh, you have Ar Arcana. Is that a skill that you have? I believe you took proficiency in that. Uh, proficiencies in languages. Um, yeah, people in the chat are saying roll Arcana, roll Arcana. Yeah, he's he's there. They're figuring it out. Oh, hey, scary social. Hello. I am trying to find out where all of my stuff is. I can't find any of it. Um. I have like my character sheet up, and I'm trying yeah, to figure if you have, out where. If you have your character sheet up, that. it's probably somewhere towards the left. There should be like a box with a bunch of words in it. That's all your skills. And one of those should say Arcana, and uh -huh. there should be like little numbers numbers next to them. While you're while you're looking, uh, also so for those who for those yeah. who just joined, uh, you can see I'll, I'll actually pull up uh, I'll pull up the character art for uh, for Panda's character again for those who just joined. This is Glib. Uh, this is what he. This is this is what has confused the merchant so much. As, as you can probably see, it's it's a confusing thing to look at first. All right. Um, if you still have Skype okay. open, I'm yeah, still trying sure. to figure we'll, out we'll, what we'll... looking at here. Yeah, I shot, the, I shot an image over to you. To anybody in the yeah. chat, I apologize. I, this is brand yeah, no, new, don't first apologize. time. That's, I think, one of the draws to this stream is, uh, for those who don't know, both both of the people who are here right now, actually, Nikhil and Panda, this is their first experience to D&D ever. So it's a uh, it's a little you know it's a learning experience for them and hopefully we can we can teach some of you guys as well. I'm pulling up your character sheet as well, Panda. Okay, so from what you sent me, the the strength go one block over to the right, and it says like acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, athletics. Those are all your skills. Oh, okay. So what is yeah. your? I have a minus. You one have a minus one in arcana. Okay, well this is gonna be funny then. I forgot that you were uh, not the best at magic. So Unlucky. what arcana is? Yeah, I'm bad at magic yeah. and oh, Arcana lucky. is basically uh, it, it could be called magical knowledge or sort of magical intelligence. So roll roll Arcana, okay. and then you know instead of adding your bonus, you're okay. gonna subtract that bonus to it. Yeah, d20. d20. Again, uh, yeah. At most everything will be a d20 unless I tell you otherwise, and that won't matter until combat, which will be later later today. Fifteen. 15. Okay, fifteen is actually quite good. So it, it's fairly obvious from where you are and the kind of cheap looking nature of this necklace that the man has shown you. Yeah, it's it's not magic at all. Like you could think maybe there's some sort of minor enchantment on it, but if anything, the enchantment is just like an illusion to make it look more magical. It's definitely not gonna do anything remotely close to what he told you it would. Okay. Um I want to try and scare the shit out of All right. Of this to, is started off starting off seriously. strong. Uh so I'm I'm cursed by a kraken. Is there any way that I can like summon an elder god uh, yeah, sort check, of situation? Check your spell here? list. I'm not really sure. Do you have a spell called Prestidigitation? Spells will be uh in the big box on the right. There's a second tab here. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh uh, it would be okay, second level I will say spells, this. Right? Uh, you have Eldritch Blast, which is basically just like your general magic missile. If you want to do something, yeah, depends on how much attention you necessarily want to attract. But you could, like, fire off a magic missile into the sky or into the ground or something like that if you want to do something of, of that nature. Uh, what does... Uh, shit. I'm... What does enthrall do? I know I have stuff that can like make people. I believe do my enthrall bidding. is something like that. If if you don't um, have the description immediately pulled up, you should. I think if you just click on it, click probably. on the list, click on it in your list, and it'll have the thing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a charming thing. So if you wanna if you wanna go just full on ethical right off the bat, you could literally just mind control this man. Um, yeah, fuck okay, it. Okay, so let me see what the stats on that are. So. You have a distracting string of words. Okay, so a wisdom saving throw. So what that is, basically, you don't have to roll anything. This guy has to roll something. Uh, so what I'm going to need from you, there okay. should be something called your spell save DC on your spells page. It's at the top. I'm actually, I'm actually got it right here. Never mind. It's a 13. So let's, uh, let's see if this guy falls under your spell or not. Now, he's a bit, you know, this is a street savvy salesman. So he's got pretty high wisdom. He's used to cons and things like that. And he got a 19. So, no, he uh, he does not fall for your tricks. 
Let's my see. Jedi mind Let me see. Does he know work. what happened? Uh, okay, so it doesn't automatically say that he that he knows. So you sort of you know you try to enchant him, and he just kind of looks at you, still a little bit confused, still holding the necklace up. Like, are are you gonna do anything? Okay. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> um, Wait, I'll, eld I'll Eldritch Blast the, the gem. You're going to Eldritch Blast the, the gem? Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can I just, like, just shoot yeah, the so gem? Yeah, so that would be a, uh, you have to do, I mean, you know what, that's like, that's like one to two feet away. I'm not even going to make you, I don't think you're going to be that bad at aiming those things. So, yeah, uh, yeah. as he's just staring at you, you suddenly raise a hand and just pop a magic burst into the gem, which shatters almost immediately. Uh, the guy's face yeah. drops. Uh, before very quickly going back <laughs> into his salesman persona, but you can see a flash of fear on his face. Mm -hmm. And he sort of just, you know, gotcha. just drops drops the shattered pieces of the necklace back down and he goes, let, let, me, gotcha. let me see if I perhaps have anything else that might be of use to you. And he books it back into an alleyway. Oh, goddammit. So, <laughs> at this point, the people at the stalls next to you have looked over upon seeing this man just running away full tilt. <laughs> <laughs> they see a man running away full tilt, and then they see a three-foot yeah. little frog man I, just I, standing the there. Because you're cl you're cloaked, right? I uh, yeah, yeah, I have like a cloak I, on, I and but it's I'm still a bright blue yeah, tiny yeah. frog. Is <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, you see some people sort of starting to to shift and and talk. I'll give you a minute to decide what to do before, you know, things things start happening. Um, people shit. in chat are saying loot uh, the stall. <laughs> you people are awful. <laughs> uh, can I just say really loud, loudly, like, motherfucker sold me an exploding gem and then quickly walk yeah, away? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's have you do an, let's have you do another roll. Why not? Uh, roll persuasion. That's, it, I think the list is in alphabetical order, so you know it should be somewhere on. Uh, on there. Oh, gonna, right, sorry I'm about that. I clicked the wrong thing. Ignore oh. that. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure. I got a, uh, I got a nat twenty, plus three. I got you got an okay. You know what? Your dice have redeemed themselves. Your dice have redeemed themselves. I yeah. And technically. <laughs> I got the whole and room And thinking about it, technically, I, that was my... I should have had you making a deception check, because that was not a true thing. But since you gave, since you got a nat 20, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, so, the guy at the stall uh, next to you, uh, another man, slightly younger, you kind of oh. hear him grumble, oh, not, not again. <laughs> and then he just sort of goes back to his work. <laughs> so, oh and, uh, yeah, by, by complete coincidence, you know, this is something that is believable for the man you scared. So... You 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 said you gotcha. booked it again also right you you ran away very quickly it's it's like the most obvious I'm lying walk away ever okay, yeah but, but it's, hey it it worked out awkward, you are, you are in a town full of into criminals into and con men you're it's people are kind of used to this sort of stuff at this point <laughs> uh, but this in in your sort of gotcha. shuffle you have wandered even even deeper into the market and everything seems you know roughly the same uh, make another perception check Great. now that you're in a new area. Can oh, can we get some glib? Can we get some uh, glib emotes in the chat? Also, six. oh six. Okay, that was you got a seven the first time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so in, in your <laughs> in your mad there, dash to get away from the scene of your very first crime, uh, you've you've managed to get yourself even a little bit more lost. And not too much more, but you just have slightly less of an idea where you are. Come on, frog boy. What uh, the fuck? Eventually, <laughs> you see uh, another person sort of beckoning to you, but this time they're beckoning from an actual storefront, not just a stall. Uh, and they see—they don't seem happy to see you, like the other man did. Uh, roll, roll insight. I'm another. Roll, I'm just burning you through a lot of checks here to get you insight. used to it. No, this is good. Yeah. I like it. Uh, and okay. Nikhil, don't worry. You'll be—you'll be in here soon. We're getting everybody in. Uh, in. Totally in don't you worry. I am getting one less okay, so every time. I just got a five. A five. <laughs> uh, so, so what insight is? What insight is is basically reading people. That's how I usually describe it. It's how you tell if somebody's lying. It's how you figure out what someone's intent is. Uh, and a five is not great, 
So this this guy seems very sinister. He seems like he might sort of be threatening you in some sort of sense. He's he doesn't seem like the helpful the helpful type. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the same fucking move again because I'm an awkward little frog boy and just awkwardly wave and uh, and shrug again and see what. Okay, he does. so uh, this he he beckons you again more forcefully this time. Like, come on, get over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, I'll shuffle my way over there and be like, um, uh, did you hear about the exploding uh, emerald down the exploding? way? Exploding? What? Get, he slams the door really quickly of his shop. You can see it is, by pure coincidence, okay. also a magic shop, though it does seem a little bit more reputable. Again, reputable for Slaughterton, which is not okay. very reputable, but it's not a random market stand. He goes, what in the hell are you doing? Just walking around with your whatever the hell you are. And he sort of just waits for an explanation. Uh, um, I, well, you see, uh, I, 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 being a frog, I did not think it was normal to wear pants. I wasn't so talking no, about what you're... I don't care about the pants. <laughs> you come into the market, you blast this stall. What are you even looking for? Blast, blast the stall. I did not blast anything. That man just so happened to have sold me an exploding. Emerald, did you not see how everyone reacted? Obviously, that emerald was exploding, and he would said it was a emerald of uh, un unfrogging, sir. He just sort of crosses his arms and and sighs. He goes, "Forget all that. Forget whatever on earth you are. Why are you here?" Um, I desperately want to not be a frog pyre anymore. So. <laughs> Anything to alleviate he sort of tiredness flicks is, his yeah. eyes up and down and goes, understandable. <laughs> yeah, you're the first person to believe that I was not born this way. Congratulations. Oh, I didn't say I didn't think you were born uh, that way. I just said I wouldn't want to be you if I had the chance. <laughs> How do you have a shop? <laughs> um, this is the crime town. There aren't have... nice people here. <laughs> This is prime town. Um, do, do you happen to have any magical items that might alleviate anything of my condition? He's sort of like... I will also accept pants. I don't have pants. None that would fit you. He sort of holds up his hand and kind of just like really aggressively sticks it into your face. And a green glow okay. sort of emanates from it. He goes... Okay, um, I'm not gonna fire anything yet. Yeah, but I'm, pre I'm prepping for a second Eldritch yeah, blast. Yeah, understandable. Of... <laughs> uh, after after a moment, he pulls he pulls his hand away. He goes, "You're here for Eovard's fortress, aren't you?" Yes, that would that. make sense. <sighs> yes, I suppose it will be attracting all sorts of unsavory characters here, won't it? There's nothing going to be in the market for you here. Everything valuable has already been taken off to other ports. But if you want to go to the fortress directly, I do want you out of my town, so... I will, I, okay. I will take now, that. Now, obviously, this man is being, like, like very shady and very weird. Yes. Very shady. He goes, uh, all right, fine. Uh, go outside, take two lefts and then a right. Look for a man in a red hat. And then he ushers you out. Of, before you can say anything, he ushers you out of the store and closes the door again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just yeah. outside again. Can I cast a memory check? Can I cast like a? Did I remember his two lefts and right? I mean, I'll, I'll say that's up to your your. Let me see what even skill that would be. I guess we can call that um. <laughs> we can call that intelligence if you want to. Uh, just a general intelligence check. So go up to your stats at the top and, yeah. and, and just roll with that modifier. Okay. His int is minus one, yeah. Oh shit. Uh, okay. 19. So Alright. I know you, I know the exact motherfucker Glib I am looking for. Has been lost too much today and does not want to continue to be lost. And so he he very well has his uh, his directions in mind. You take your two lefts, you take your right. You get some weird looks along the way, but uh, you know, as sort of expected, as like you said, you're you're very used to it at this point now. Gotcha. Before you see, 
uh, a, a figure standing on the corner wearing a red, sort of like Robin Hood-esque hat. I don't know what it's called, but you know, like the, the pointy, the pointy hat. And he's yeah. sort of standing there leaning up against uh, a wall. And you know, it hasn't been that long. It's been like maybe five minutes. So it's weird that this guy's already here, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um... I'm I'm gonna walk up to him and say I was referred to by a very rude shopkeeper to come and yeah, find you. Yeah, he is rude, isn't he? Uh, Fortress, Fortress, right? You want me to take you there? Yes, that is exactly what I need. Fortress, let's go. And he just starts walking. <laughs> okay, I'm following. I'm following a random man with no name that I was referred to by a man that was very shady. This let's, is. Let's go. I things can't get any worse, right? Like. That's another rule of, of D&D Panda. Never say that. Never say that. <laughs> if only because now I'm going to change things to spite you. Just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But oh, fuck. but <laughs> uh, he, you continue following him. He doesn't seem particularly chatty. He seems very, you know, very businesslike. But you follow him for quite a ways, sort of out of the city, it seems. If you want to go ahead and ask him any questions oh, yeah. during this time uh, about Slaughterton or about the general area or about Eovard, you are welcome to do so. So you, you're you not going to murder me once we get outside of town in glaring eyes, right? Because this seems like you're going to murder me as soon as we're outside of town in kinda, glaring eyes. He kind of looks at you and goes, do you have anything worth stealing? <laughs> I don't even have pants, man. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to convince him enough. Uh, and without without saying another word, he kind of continues on. Again, you're you're welcome to ask any more questions that you okay. may have. Gotcha. Uh, so what what's at this fortress that I was told that I apparently am am seeking? Uh, I don't know. I haven't been in there, but I, there's some magic stuff. Probably, dude was crazy. Had all sorts of weird nonsense in there. I don't know. Something to help with your situation. Do you think that there might be a a, a amulet of unfrogging uh, in there? Rumors are that Eovard was working on transmutation stuff. All sorts of weird monsters were coming out of there left and right. So if he can make things into monsters, maybe he can unmonster you. Okay. I don't care what else is in there. I want to get in there. He nods and continues on. So you reach the edge of the city. Uh, and go maybe like like half an hour out. It's it's not a short walk. Uh, before the guy uh, stops at a, a a little clearing, he says, "Hold on, we gotta wait here." Okay. Okay. Uh, he sort of gets his back to the trees. Uh, goes, yeah. So you know how I sort of dodged your question about murdering you earlier. I'm Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's not. Come it's on, not personal. Man. You seem nice, but I got it's a job. <laughs> and he pulls he pulls out a on. dagger. He goes, "I'm sorry, you don't have any pants. I feel really bad about this." Ah, uh, fuck. Um, hold on. All right. Uh, can I cast? I have unseen servant. Is there any way that I can just have this invisible force take the knife? Uh, you can. Yeah. I mean, you can try. You can have your unseen servant. Uh sort of pull the knife out of his hand. Yeah, because I, I want I want him to be scared of him just pulling it out and just immediately just swiping the knife out. Like, the, the okay. fuck it, come on, uh, man. Let's see. I think I'm going to... I'm going to have him do a dexterity check to see if he can hold on to it instead of getting pulled out. We'll see if... that's. I'm making up okay. what I... Uh, that's a 15. I'm going to call that good. So he sort of... He sort of feel. You can see his hand, like, jerk slightly. He goes, yeah, I was told to yeah. expect magic. Sorry. Uh, he sort of starts stepping forward, but before he, he gets uh, in too close to you, out of the woods behind you, uh, a clawed hand suddenly appears on his shoulder. Nikhil, introduce your character. and But give it a second before you talk because I have to import the audio. Uh, Let me know. Okay, everyone should be able to hear now. <laughs> yeah, I had to import right, the good? audio, but we should be good. All right. Um, yeah, this basically sums it up. Uh, it's Gambit, kind of. It's taba I'm a tabaxi. I'm a cat person. I'm a rogue, so I could be a thief. Um, I like danger. Uh, it's like an adrenaline junkie kind of thing. Um, just doing shit, having a good time, being a cool, badass person. 
and doing things so that other people look at me and go, wow, that's a badass person. Now I should clarify, person. the don't ask him how he got those scars I added because I didn't know what else to put, so don't blame Nikhil for that. That was that was my my nonsense. Okay, good, I... Nikhil loves it. That's good because I didn't clear it with him beforehand. <laughs> All right, so uh, you have now intervened uh, within in this uh, this little conflict. Uh, let's let's backtrack a little bit, shall we? To your character's name, can can we just call you Canyon? Is that okay? Yeah, whatever. What? Sure. Okay, so we'll like. we'll just say Canyon. Uh, Canyon was in the market doing his sort of daily shopping uh, when all of a sudden he's heard of a strange explosion coming from you know the other side of the market stall and and turned to see a strange, very short, cloaked figure fleeing the scene at an incredible pace. And from what I know of Canyon, that seems like something he might be interested in, so he followed. <laughs> Uh, and interestingly, uh, also, Panda, you rolled really low on your perception. You would have noticed him following if you'd rolled higher, but uh, you didn't, so... <laughs> <laughs> Fucker! Panda kept me so out at, of this at, game. <laughs> uh, so at this point, you, you track these people all the way outside the city to this grove. You're, you're sort of familiar with, uh, with this, this criminal who has uh, tried to, to murder Glib. You don't know him by name, but you've seen him around. You know he's not the best of, of guys. So at this point... I'll I'll toss it over to you. Was where? Oh, you're 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 in the. Them. Sorry, I should have clarified more. You are on the way to the fortress or wherever uh wherever this guy was taking Glib, and you have intervened in the attempted in the attempted murder. Uh, as as you sort of stand there, the guy sort of whips around, has his knife, goes, and who are wait who what who, I was told there was just a frog guy. <laughs> I tell him I'm not with the frog guy, and then I'd like to take his dagger from him if that's possible. Because I, I, I mean, no, I need it to kill the frog guy. <laughs> you can't. I'm not with the frog. Give me your it's, knife. No. I mean, yeah, that's basically how it happened. <laughs> so he sort of just he sort of stands there arguing. I mean, if I. Can you can you just leave me alone? I need to do my job. Nah, can I take the knife by force? Yeah, you can try whatever you want. Uh, I would say do a yeah. do a either. Uh, you have high sleight of hand, don't you? Uh, sleight of hand is you, so. Yeah. Let's do a sleight of hand thing to see if you can sort of whip it out of his hand. And where are we? Uh, you can kind of do it however you want. I'm not really picky. Um, there is a dice roller on D and D Beyond. Yeah. I'm using physical dice because I have like eight sets of them next to me. Um, you can also literally just Google roll D twenty. I I don't I don't care yeah. how you do it. I if you it. tap the number in D and D Beyond, it adds your uh, your thing on it too. Oh, okay, nice. But where's the roller in D and D Beyond then? No, if you just like click the the number next to the thing that you're trying to roll then it rolls it automatically. Oh, I see. What am I rolling, Matt? Uh, you are rolling sleight of hand. Sleight of hand to see if you can, uh, if you can get that, that oh, knife uh, out of his hand. I see. All right, I rolled a six, and it's plus you eight. Have a so plus eight to sleight of hand? My Jeez, God, oh, that's higher man. than I thought it was. Okay. Uh, so let me, I'm going to roll a dexterity check to counteract that. Uh, nowhere near, nowhere near as high. He got a seven. So yeah, he's sort of, as he's sort of confused protesting, you sort of smack his hand and just dexterously whip the knife out of it. Can I do something while yeah, he go ahead. This? this is not an official combat, so there's not really a, uh, ter official turn order only matters in combat, unless I say otherwise. I'm about to make it a fucking combat situation. I, uh, I want to cast Hold Person. Uh, okay, so let me look at the stats for that spell. Hold Person. Uh, another Wisdom saving throw. Oh, that's that's good. This guy this guy doesn't have as good Wisdom as you can probably tell by everything about him. Good. All right, so let's do that Wisdom saving throw for him. I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera. It's it's not because it's too dark and I haven't fixed my lighting. But that was a one. Uh, that was so. So what hold person does is it uh, it paralyzes someone for the duration. Uh, so we're gonna say not only is he paralyzed, you cast this at the perfect time as he's whipping around. So he sort of whips, he reaches out to grab his knife back, and suddenly just falls over. 
Okay. I'm I'm gonna start screaming. You tried to fucking kill me in the middle of nowhere. I mean, he's he's paralyzed on the ground at the moment. He's not gonna be for too long, but yeah, he's no. he doesn't respond. He la he's laying there. I'm just I'm just senselessly just kind of I I'm uh, weak because I'm a tiny little frog man, but I'm trying to kick him with a flipper. Okay. But I'm still not used to flipper feet, so it's it's not yeah. doing much. Can I? Kill him with his own knife. You could, yeah, go go right ahead. Uh, I, I will probably we just turn this into a fucking. I'll make case, you. Man. Yeah, I, I described <laughs> this on the in the video as Guardians of the Galaxy handling a Doctor Strange situation, and you're already living up to that very well. So that's that's great. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I should mention when I did my character thing, but I really wanted my dude to be like obsessed with death. Great, so fantastic oh, score. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, so what you're going to do, Nikhil, is you're going to make, I'm going to have you make it, well, no, I'll save attack tutorial for later. He's paralyzed on the ground. It's, you can kill him if you want to. I'm not going to make you roll anything. <laughs> he's, was... he's laying there. Jesus Christ. Uh, so yeah, you take his, All right, take so his knife and we're just... however you want to. Two dudes in the middle of the road middle with a dead rock, body to, to the I hundreds the of people in chat we've been here for half an hour and my party is already turning into murder hobos please pray for me pray <laughs> to all the D, &D gods you know <laughs> okay can, can i just like look up at, at him after like a really long awkward pause of just staring at this dead body and then just go so where'd you get the scars <laughs> Yeah, and then the kill. That's that's you. You your guys are doing your your scene now. Yeah, oh, yeah. You don't you don't have to bounce back and forth to me every time. All right, a different frog person gave them to me, and then I stabbed that one too. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> you know about any fortress, or was this guy just blowing steam up? For no, Nikhil, you you do know <laughs> the general direction of the fortress. Yes, you've been in in Slaughterton for long enough to to know. I think I would know. Yeah, I know there's okay, a fortress somewhere. I'm going to message Momo real quick and see <laughs> when she's getting here, but continue. Okay. Um, it, if, if I let you steal all the shit off of him, uh, can can let you me. take me there without, without killing me? Do you have a way to stop me from taking all the shit off of him? I do know a couple of Elder Gods. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Someone in chat just said, take the guy's pants. <laughs> Would you like? You know what? Pants? Hold up. Pause. I'm I'm straight up gonna go. I'll let you take everything but his <laughs> pants. If uh if you can uh if you can help me get there. I I think that sounds suitably intriguing. You could have his pants. All right. Okay. Okay. I I I want my <laughs> I want to try and put on the pants, but the fact that I'm a tiny yeah I was about man, a, I was about to point fit. out that there's no way that these pants are going to fit you. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. They don't. I, I try to put them on and hold them up, and I'm stubborn as fuck. So if, if any questions get asked, I'm just holding them right now and just waddling along in pants that are comedically yeah, too big. Yeah, okay. So you, you've, you've got your very ill-fitting pants. Uh, on that, so uh, with that note, there are, there are no other people around. You're pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, Nikhil, you do know where this fortress is. Uh, if you do want to take him there, and I will also note, this is the, for talking about, you know, character motivations and everything, this is the fortress of a necromancer. So it does seem like something that Canyon would be interested in. I'm not, you know, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely, definitely interested. Um, so wait, do I have the weapons that are on my sheet now in addition to yes, my uh, if knife? Yes, if you take anything, you can add it to your, your character sheet. I don't really worry about, like, carry weight. You know how there's, like, carry weight in Skyrim and stuff? I'm not going to worry about that unless you do something, like, notably weird, you know? But I, but you I have everything, everything on your sheet shit, already right? on you, yes. All right, well, I'm going to put his knife down, because I already have a knife. So, I don't so, make... so <laughs> you murder a man and set the murder weapon on the ground next to him. Gotcha. Cool. Yes. That's. <laughs> he slit his own throat. <laughs> I, I don't think there's fingerprint testing in this world, but hey, I'm the DM. I can decide whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> so you set the murder weapon on the ground. This just becomes a cop procedural. <laughs> now we're this is going to be really funny when we get to like the actual the actual campaign plans. Uh, so yeah, you you are now free to continue on the path. It was the correct path to the fortress. So 
Uh, He's an honor. Yeah, yeah, he didn't think. He... Before we go, can I like, can I like hold, be like, wait, hold up. Uh, I didn't eat when we were in town, and then try and drink the guy's blood. I, you. I'm a va I'm a vampire. Well, no, we're what I was gonna say, because I feel like this is a good point. point to say, you don't have to ask like for normal. You don't have to ask me, can I do this? You can just do okay. it. So, yeah. before before we leave, uh, I've already taken the guy's pants. We've looted the body. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink the guy's blood before. Just be like, hey, I didn't need anything in town. I need a snack uh, real quick. You, and you, yeah, you you take a take a sip. Drink, at, at this point, at this point, it is just to to. I'm trying to prove to the scary cat man who just murdered a man in front of me with with very very little incentive yeah. that I mean business. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, oh, I did the, the fucking frogman with elder god stuff. And yes, under, understandable. Okay. Someone uh, in the chat so asked, "Is this still in the middle I, of the I, road?" I, They're a little off the road because there was a murder going down. Yeah. There's not like Ooh. there's this is an isolated road. Just this is that. there's not people everywhere. And remember. <laughs> It's like midday. It's, it's like 5 p.m. at this point. Yeah. In the middle of... I want to ask... like 5 p.m. Or not Panda. Glib. Glib, can you die? That's my response to watching you drink your blood. <laughs> can I die? Uh, I feel like I shouldn't answer that. <laughs> I feel like you're the one person I shouldn't tell a, a significant answer to. I'm going to go with no for now. Interesting. I'm gonna go with no until I need medical attention. That's a, a generally good answer, I would say. <laughs> uh, so at this point, uh, um, unless you have any any other things that you want to do in this area, Canyon, or you're turning back for whatever reason, we can say you you move on ahead to the fortress. Uh, so we walked in silence again, the whole way. You, you are welcome. You are welcome to talk amongst yourselves, ask any questions. I'd like to think that we had, like, small talk. We don't need yeah. to go through it all, but I'd like to. No, <laughs> no I'm saying general for, like, awkward small talk after. If you have any lore order. questions or anything, you're welcome to. Please, no, please yeah, do not roleplay half an hour of small talk as you're walking along the road, but you are you are welcome <laughs> to. We can address any important questions you may have. I'll put it, I'll put it that way. Uh, so after after a while... Uh, you you sort of enter a tunnel as it seems the the path sort of begins to slope downwards uh it gets you know notably more dark as you're as you're going in it's starting to get dark outside at this point anyway but eventually uh, at the end of this tunnel you see some sort of spurts of of green fire uh now both of you roll perception Someone just in the chat said nemesis, which is a good a good term for yeah. Nikhil's character. Thank you, Caduceus949. We're, we're rolling for perception, yeah. Per, it's I alphabetical. Keep, I keep getting lower. Okay. God damn it. I'm at four. I rolled a four. I, I rolled a six. I have plus two. So okay. So, wow. You guys are not good at perception rolls. But okay, whatever. So uh, you, I have night vision. I have the vision of an elder yeah, god that's actually and worth night noting. vision. Both, and both of you vision. do have dark vision, so you can see in this dark tunnel as if it is <laughs> it is pretty light outside. It's not pitch black for you. We we can't perceive things in the dark tunnel. We can technically see. <laughs> I can see everything. I'm just yeah. Fucking dumb, I mean, man. <laughs> you said it, not me. Uh, so you continue <laughs> onwards. And eventually, uh, you start to notice some more signs of a struggle, it seems. And to, to remind, this is the tunnel to the fortress of Eovard the Malignant, who was a notable necromancer who terrorized the land for many years. But he was very recently deposed by an army of adventurers. And you can see sort of the signs of those struggles as the adventurers fought their way in. You know, there are many bones and skeletons and sort of remnants of things uh, going down the hallway. You can see, like, you know, some of the skulls have, like, dents and chips in them. Clearly, someone fought their way through this area pretty hard. And at the end of the tunnel, you come to a large door. Now, this is actually a puzzle that I am stealing from a friend of mine, but it will be a good intro to, uh, to a key aspect of D&D. So somebody might want to write this down. I'm getting your first your first oh puzzle, and I can rehash it, you know, whatever whatever you want, I'll, I'll rehash for you. you don't, I'm not just going to say it once and then done. 
but this massive, gotcha. very intimidating looking gate at the end of the tunnel. You know, it's got skulls around the edges and it's made of like big black iron. It, it's the gate that you would expect for a necromancer's fortress. Uh, around the edge of the entire door, there is this large sort of glowing green border. On either sides, there are chains, one gold, the gold on the left, and the silver on the right. On the center of the door is a compass with a snake for a needle. Uh, right under the snake is possibly the oddest thing in the entire door. There's like what it seems to be like a little glass case. You can't see through the edge of it, but you can see inside. Uh, it seems to be full of bees. Half of, About half of them are dead and just sort of lying on the ground, but half of the bees are, are flying around. Uh, and then there is, uh, above that, a lever, again, in the center. And at the very top of the door are three crystals. All of them are sort of dark and gray. So this is the door that is presented to you. You are you are now welcome to, to try okay. what you want to open it. Uh, again, I can rehash any of the description that you may need. Normally, I would have had a picture of this, but I didn't have time because we had stream problems to fix. <laughs> Explain the okay. snake thing. Explain what? In the very snake. center of the door, there is a compass, uh, north, south, east, west, which my camera's inverted, but you get what I mean. But instead of a needle, there's like a little a little metal snake, and it's pointing oh, it's okay. pointing north at the moment. And where is that? In reference it is to directly left? below. I'm gonna walk up and pull the lever. The the central lever is very stiff, very hard to open. Seems like it's not meant to be engaged uh, in some some form. Okay. Oh what my god, my friends are literally point? texting me saying, "How dare you put them through this puzzle right now?" I'm sorry, guys, because they oh, know what this no. is. Okay. Yes, this is another point for people who have just tuned in to mention that neither Panda or I have yes, ever this played Yes, this is their first time. Again, the reason that I am putting you through a puzzle of this caliber is to expose you to a very important part of D&D, which, you know, a, a critical aspect. So you'll have to trust me. So okay. people keep saying, chew violets. Man, I've been thinking about and it. I'm trying if, to. Another good thing with D&D, if all else fails, just start. It's like a Lego game. If all else fails, just start doing things, and maybe the solution will make itself apparent. Start hitting shit. Wait, so what's like the, a, the snake facing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pointing. The, north. The, north. Oh, did, it, the tail is in the center and the head is facing north. So is that so? The glass case of beads that's in front it, of it the is door. Embedded, is that... I should have been more specific. It is embedded into the door under the compass. So the center of the door is lever, compass, bees. So center, lever, compass, glass full of half yeah. dead bees. Well, glass glass gotcha. of bees that's... and half of the bees are dead. Half dead bees is a different description, but yes. On the one side, there's a golden chain. On the other side, there's yes. a silver chain. And there's three yes. gems on top. The fuck? Kind of. Okay. Um, is it, uh, Lord of the Rings? You just say, like, open sesame in a different language? Can uh, I, can I like... <laughs> I Fuck it. Try it. I yeah, mean... <laughs> try whatever. And again, since especially since we're live, I may have mercy on you if this takes too long, but I also think Chad is going to watch or enjoy watching <laughs> you struggle. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. So can I can I pull on one of the chains? Are they like just chains on the wall, or are they chains that go into the wall? Uh, you can, you like, can you can pull, pull on them. them. Yeah, you, uh, they're they're going like into the door, but you can pull them. You want to pull gold or silver? Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with gold. I'm gonna you, pull the gold. You chain pull first. the gold chain and hear an extremely loud scream emanate from behind the door. Uh, interestingly, can you? You don't hear anything. It's only for Glib. <laughs> Okay. okay, so I freak the fuck out initially. Like, I yank on it, then I hear the scream, and I am immediately like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, and try and get away from it immediately. So, to me, that's all just a frog. Yeah, he pulls, he pulls a cord and then just panics. And then, panics. And then yes. loses it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, can I pull the you silver one? You pull the silver one and hear a very loud hissing sound as sort of fitting the snake. It's, again, very loud and behind the side and of I'm the door. I'm assuming no. I don't hear and that. Again, it's only, only for you. Canyon. I want to look, look at him kind of weird for freaking out that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can. All right. Did you didn't hear that? I heard something. What the hell did you hear? A little hissing sound. Snake. Snake. You didn't heat. hear the screaming? No. <laughs> I heard a snake, maybe, which is a hissing sound. 
<laughs> Damn it. Give me that chain. And I walk over and I And pull this it. time you hear the hissing sound. I wanna, yeah, I pulled the gold. And again, you happening. hear the scream. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're, on so, page. we're on the same page. That's a scream. This is a hiss. <laughs> There's a snake. Uh, Wait, move? Can I move yeah. the snake? Yeah. On the compass? Can I move it towards the, I guess, east? Whichever one's facing the uh, Yes, so you tilt the compass over to the, uh, the, the needle over to the east. Very weirdly, some of the bees in the cage drop down dead, and a couple of the ones that were dead suddenly start flying around again. This is the Not fortress me. of a necromancer. Obviously, no, something is weird. So you, you start spinning it, and the sort of the cycle of bees, which, which arise and fall, <laughs> just sort of, you know, it just keeps going up and down, up and down. Uh, okay, um, so, so, uh, <laughs> uh, Canyon, point, point the thing towards the silver chain, and I'm gonna pull it, cause snake and hiss, so, you know, noises. I, I stop messing with the chain, and I point it. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good thought, okay, and you so hear put... a couple of, uh, of gears uh. seem to turn on the chain. And the right-hand okay. crystal, which is the, the crystal on the top nearest to the silver chain, glows blue. Blue. Okay. Uh, that's got to be a good sign. Yeah, that's where... Point it towards the other one, and you pull the chain, because I'm not listening to that fucking screaming again. You seem like you have a constitution way stronger than mine. You deal with that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I actually don't know. I guess I'm not playing a character. i got to find out what constitution Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know uh, Okay, yeah, yeah you're, you're okay. fine. No, that, that's a turn of phrase. I mean, like, your guy seems a lot more... <laughs> yeah, not the, not the stat. Just my how, little it, how it be. Little frog man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I do that. I pull the chain. Uh, he you hear gears here. again, and the left-hand crystal uh, of the three lights up red. So it's red, dark, blue. And again, my camera is inverted, but... Okay. All right, can I break the thing with the bees in it? You want to try to break? Okay. We just started fixing <laughs> so you, the puzzle. So you try to, to... What, what are what are you, you trying to do? Like, like no, describe... Glass. You can break glass. Describe, you know, how, how you exactly you want to do it. I, I mean, yeah, I'm glass, like, right? how well, I mean, like, what are, are you... Break. Are you punching it? Are you, like, using, like, how the hilt of your it? dagger? Like, what are you... I guess... I have a I have a, a sword, right? Like a rapier. I want to use the hilt of it and just smash the thing. Okay. Uh, so you you okay? That's yeah, sure. You slam. Make a strength check. Actually, I'll have you make a check for it. Yeah. So those those are just your basic stats. They'll be the, I just the wanted to stay top. In. While he's doing this, I'm screaming. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck are you doing? That is. <laughs> everyone's everyone's saying you're getting murdered by bees in the I, chat, I got a 12. which, as the DM, I cannot confirm nor deny. God, <laughs> I got a twelve. Uh, you got a twelve. Okay, so you slam the glass, but you know you're doing it with a rapier. It doesn't have a lot of heft to it. Uh, but what I will say, uh, around you, scatter. There are still the remnants of this uh, of this battle that happened the last time that people went into this fortress, which was again fairly recent. So there are like you know larger swords or weapons or hammers that you could try if you wanted to try doing that again. I'd like to go try. All right, it. so you pick up. Let's. Oh, um, I, unless Glib's gonna stop you. I'm not gonna stop him. I'm crawling up the wall so I can escape the bees because I am both the frog and a vampire. Yes, and can yeah, do you that. can do so that. So I'm just, I'm up. I'm up near where the gems are and just like okay. cowering at uh, this point. So, so yeah, Nikhil, uh, Canyon picks up a, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what great sword hammer, something bigger. Make another strength check. All right. My strength is a plus zero. Yeah, this isn't really something you can do with any other stat, though. You're quite a lean. <laughs> oh, I got a 19. 19's good. Jesus. Yeah, 19's fantastic. <laughs> And I was going to give you extra because you're using a, a heavier weapon. So though the weapon is a little too heavy for you, you wouldn't really want to use it in combat, you managed to swing it enough to shatter this glass. You shatter the glass and bees go everywhere. I don't know what you expected. <laughs> and there are angry, now there are angry bees in the tunnel. Wait, but I want to, then let me move the snake again. Uh, 
Bees so you move you bees you move the thing. <laughs> some of the bees die. Some other ones come back to life. Now there's just still more bees. <laughs> ah, see, I am that sucks. this I entire time while he's like, fixing this. I was hoping the spell would like expand, not just be like it was trapped inside the case, not just be for bees. No, it's still the bees. It's. I'm gonna be honest. I do not have instructions the, on I, this puzzle based on what to do if someone breaks the case. So we're off. We're off script. <laughs> I, this entire it. time, I am just screaming and waving around. I'm gr trying to yank <laughs> off one of the torches that's lighting the <laughs> the door to try and ward off the bees okay. and screaming. Because so, you, you so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a d4 for each of you. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna so uh, for for, for Glib, you were hiding and and trying to get away from the bees, so you. Take two damage from just a billion bees. Bro, bee stings? Jeez. There's yeah, a there's a bunch of bees. It's game. not. It's a lot of bees. Uh, and then, and then Canyon, you also you also <laughs> take two off. damage from bees. So that's the first damage of the campaign, and it's because Nikhil broke the bee cage. <laughs> if I will say, people that has people in the chat are saying, uh, Gleb, you're a frog. You can eat the bees, Fuck. which you could try to do. There's a billion bees. All right, yeah, bees sure, whatever. Uh, um, I just start swiping up bees okay, and so eating them. After a few moments, most of the bees have uh, either made their way up the tunnel or been stomped on or eaten or regardless, and the tunnel is is pretty pretty clear of bees at this point. Nothing seems to have changed within the door. <laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, I am... I am royally pissed. <laughs> I, um, I come be... down off the wall. What the fuck were you thinking? It was a bowl of bees, dude. Oh, um, I, okay, I will actually say one thing real quick. There, there, something has changed with the sort of glass that was frosted a little bit cleared. You can look through now into the the back, the back of the tunnel on the other side. There you go. Okay. I would like to do that. What's uh, that? Roll perception. <laughs> Yeah, oh, right, right, I'm not right, going right. to make you do that for free. Let you do that for free. is completely ignoring my ass as I'm <laughs> panicking in the corner. <laughs> All right, I got six okay, questions. Eight, so eight. Uh, unfortunately, you don't really see a lot. The tunnel looks very similar. It is more of the same. You know, there's some scattered weapons, skeletons. <laughs> it's just evidence of a battle that has continued through to the other side. Right. Where is... Where is uh, Glib at this moment? That's is he a... still up there? Where... No, I came down off the wall. Wait, hold on. How big is this hole? Are you made thinking by the, uh, the... you could try to squeeze through it. it? It's not. It's not big. I'd say maybe like one foot by one foot. I'm small. I can fit through there. At this point, I'm like, hey, genius, try that again. Hit the other glass. There's another glass. Huh? It's a, it's like a container of bees. You broke one side of it, and now there's the other side of the glass. Yeah, that's right? or is the or no, is it completely I mean, open? It doesn't really matter either way. He's going to be able to break it. So let's just unless unless you have yeah. some right, issue happens. with breaking it, Nikhil. Then, then no, yeah. there's no. I would glad. I okay, thought then I yeah. So so sure. So I've the door is now or the hole in the door is now completely clear. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll just go. All right. I'm gonna fix this, and I crawl. I crawl through the the hole. I try and crawl through. Okay, the hole. Okay. So you're on the other side. side. Again, it through. looks it looks fairly similar. Um, I, what, what is your goal for going through? Are you looking at the other side of the door? Are you continuing onward? What are you? I, I'm trying to figure out how to open Okay, the roll, door. um, oh. well, actually, you know, you don't need to roll. Um, it doesn't look like the door's locked. <laughs> oh my god. Are you telling me we could have just fucking opened? No, alright, I immediately yeah, it opens the door and try and open it. It this was so let me so let me explain to you guys remember i said you made me eat bees and i told you guys open. that this puzzle was to introduce you to a critical component of DD. i never said that critical component was puzzles the component is not everything is as it seems and here's your clue people have been in this tunnel before there were evidences of a fight on either side the adventurers cleared the tunnel and killed the wizard it was open <laughs> I thought the twist was going to be that we just need to pull both no, strings was, at once. No, the door was open. Because one did it and one did it. <laughs> so I, I was know. acting in a way that I thought maybe. People not are be saying this is DM still. cruelty. No, this is me teaching them to have critical thinking I, skills. I'm a great DM. I open the door immediately. You are. Yeah, don't listen to me. I, I open the door immediately, and my first thing is like. <laughs> 
Your well, first idea was business, break it? I want to say, did you enjoy your snack? <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I spit a bee at him. A bee has been a bee has been spit. I I won't make any damage rolls for that. But yeah, the, it's as as spit a bee at him. Fuck you. Come on. Uh, it <laughs> is it is now now cleared, and you can continue on into the uh, into the the fortress proper. Hello. Oh hey, Momo, you literally came at the best possible time. Let. No, but, uh, but you're, yeah, we're, okay, let me, let me get your camera ported into the right thing. Uh, you're already showing up on the active, which is great. And, uh, um, and equal out the audio as well. I think that, uh, I, yeah, hold on. I gotta, I gotta get her in. Oh, Momo, just for yeah, you guys, you guys, so yeah, up, uh, you guys update her as I, uh, as I get everyone so, else or her camera ready. Do you know Panda's playing the world's most unlucky frogman? So he went to a store or like a market. We're in a place called Slaughtertown, right? And he went to a market. He got into an altercation with the shopkeeper. He blew a gem up, but then he made everyone believe the gem blew itself up. <laughs> and then he got wa went with his other guy seeking a fortress of an old necromancer. Mm -hmm. And well, the other quick, guy turned around. And can you guys him. hear Momo at this point? Can you hear I me? Say yes or no. Hopefully you should be able to. Yes, okay, cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I just had to get her off the cam feed. And let me fix Nikhil's camera. So, random dude tries to kill uh, Glib, uh, Panda's character. I showed up. I killed random dude. Kind of for shits and giggles. It wasn't really a part of it. <laughs> Glib and I have um, now gone to the fortress. We got stuck at this random entryway where there was a bunch of dead bodies and stuff. And bees. That's very important. Oh, bees. Uh, there was a tank of undead bees, or half dead, half alive bees. Um, and I broke the tank. And we both got stung by bees, which caused more damage than I expected. There was... And <laughs> it turned out that the way to open the door was that the door was already I did a, I did a mean DM <laughs> play on them. About... It was a very complicated door puzzle involving a compass, a jar of, of half alive and half dead bees, two chains, some fire, where, there was, gemstones where was the fire? that light up. There was like no a, fire. Like a, you just made that part up. You told me there was a the green torches. fire when we walked part in. part of the door. Yeah. Okay, the torches, whatever. There was two, whatever. There was, there was fucking green torches over the, over the door. There was these three gemstones, like an old school video so, game puzzle, and a very complicated thing on the door. Well, Nikhil's first plan was shatter the glass of bees. No, first plan was, <laughs> wait, second plan was shatter the glass of bees. <laughs> so I have now consumed about a hundred dead bees and then crawled through the hole to find that the door was already open. By the way, that guy that we killed, uh, we also drained his blood and I stole his pants. That's true. It's so starting off real strong is, 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 is what's happening. I also, I killed him be, like to get his dagger. Like I stole his dagger and then I killed him with it and then I left the dagger there. Because it Metal. was it was shitty. So yeah. that's that's where we're at. That's where we're that at. Is, that's... All right. Well, oh, thanks yeah, for the, still, the fill, yeah. filling me in. But I don't believe. <laughs> Uh, okay, so at this point, uh, the door is open, and you guys can continue down the tunnel into the to the fortress proper. Chat just reminded me that I'm still holding the pants yeah. up that are way oversized I mean, for I me, and and still waddling around with yeah, them. I'm was, still trying to look like a person. On the wall and just clutching plants with the other hand. Yeah, yep. That is, yeah, I'm, still like, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still waddling around holding them up as best. Do you, do you want to give them to Momo? Because she has to borrow them. Yeah, yeah Momo's oh, is here. Momo here now. She got here. Yeah. No, I mean like in the the, the part. She's like, been she there. in the fortress. What? I've literally yeah. been here the whole time. No, she was there when you met. Always okay. forget that I'm here. Okay, can we introduce her to the chat? I'm really. Are you guys missing something? <laughs> He was alone. I'm when okay, I say maybe it, we him. should maybe we should do a little bit of backtracking. Okay, that's maybe we a should do a little weird. bit of backtracking and uh, and figure out figure out Momo's intro here. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to get movie. gaslit into realizing right. that <laughs> Momo had somebody with us the entire character. time. She watched you eat all those bees. She did nothing. 
<laughs> I mean, you were you were wilding, and I was just standing here, just letting you do everything. Yep. You obviously had it under control. <laughs> yeah, Momo, go ahead and yeah, do your Why little intro. I um, so hey everyone, I'm Momo, and I am playing um SG. Some guy, I guess. <laughs> um, I am a an aberrant mind sorcerer, changeling, and I'm here to fuck <laughs> shit up. <laughs> and now, seeing uh, as 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 SG speaks up again. Memories sort of flood back into your mind that, yeah, SG has been here the entire time. And maybe something about the bees and the panic sort of sort of cleared those memories from you. But, but yeah, they, they were here. Uh, SG was, uh, was, you know, joined to the group much like Canyon was in that uh, you were in, a, in the market doing a sort of normal day shopping when you heard a, a very odd explosion. Uh, something that you don't usually hear even in Slaughterton. Uh, and saw a weird cloaked frogman running away from the scene. Uh, you followed the frogman, yeah. you know, as you do, as Canyon was also doing, not that you knew that, uh, and saw them make their way all the way to Eovard's fortress. Now, Eovard is a necromancer, a necromancer who was recently killed in this t- uh, near this town. Uh, and you were in this town investigating him, because Eovard possibly has some ties to uh, some some history with with SG which I will not say so far but that's why you're here is you were uh, mm-hmm. you were investigating Eovard as well and since these two were uh, were going to the fortress you sort of just joined up with them and rudely they forgot all about you and I'm sure that has nothing to do with your aberrant mind magic that's sort of just always surrounding your your whole aura I mean, I can't so, help it it's just this is what it is so SG, I, I gotta ask you: Did you just stand there and watch as as I tried to grandstand and and drink this guy's blood just to yeah, piss you can, off? You can sort of retroactively insert like... yourself into that scene as 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 you like, Momo. I mean, I was busy looking for his cat. <laughs> uh, all right, here, we'll, and we have all the. There we go. Now you guys can know all the characters that the that the emotes are for. There's the last emote. So. With the party, or at least the first three members of the party, uh, united, or, you know, retroactively united, let's say, you all continue downwards <laughs> into uh, into the fortress proper. And uh, the tunnel slowly widens out. You can see that the evidence of a, of a struggle has, you know, continued on. But when you get to the end of the fortress, it yeah. opens up into a vast cave, a sort of green river of... I honestly don't know what it is. Some sort of mysterious magic slime. Probably best not to touch it. Uh, you know, a, a bridge of bones going across it. And then at the far end, the castle itself with the giant skull gate and entrance and all of that. So let me go ahead and switch this okay. over. Let's see if this works. I might The audio might cut out. I might need to re- report it. Uh, let's see. Remove this. Cameras... Yes, Our videos they should gone. be back yeah. now. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so here we have this. This is what you guys are seeing right uh, now. There we go. And uh, as as you can okay. maybe guess by the fact that this is a uh, a map, it's almost time for combat. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. oh boy. But right now, it's, we're not in combat yet. I'm just putting this up here as you know, as a as a visual aid. So you three are about here. The tunnel is uh, has opened up into this area and you have come out here okay. obviously whoops i hate D D beyond's zoom function it's really weird obviously <laughs> this is the fortress you're here you're sort of free to do as as you like right now okay um My i'd first... like to oh, oh no 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 go sorry. ahead go ahead yeah i'd like to go around and say here kitty pss, 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 pss. looking for a uh, yeah, eovard eovard yes eovard yes. uh uh, whether whether Canyon responds to to your calling for a cat, I do yeah, not I know. That's up to Nikhil. Uh, but <laughs> you want to take but nothing friend. else makes itself apparent. <laughs> I want to be. I want to be. Oh, wait. I want. I have a rapier, right? Still, I want to pull that out and just like kind of point it at him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? Uh, you never looked for a cat before? No, cats said they're always around when I want one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pretty difficult. Maybe it'd be easier if I look like Eovard and I like change my whole body changes and it looks like. Eovard. Yeah. Okay. So uh, suddenly, out of the blue, uh, out of the blue, 
S G. That's a great question. Hold on. Do we know? Do we do we know that this guy has a cat or or is, I do. Or is S <laughs> yeah, she does. I do. Yeah, I don't get what the problem is. So okay. yeah, so sort of out of the blue, uh, as you're outside of this fortress, uh, your your new slash old friend suddenly just shifts into the form of the most terrified necromancer on this side of the continent. If there's any... Is there a problem? Both of you, of course, recognize him. I put the rapier away. <laughs> okay, like, I'm I a changeling. It happens all the time. You should get used to it. <laughs> so so I jump immediately. The, se the second that SG changes, I, <laughs> I do the frog thing and jump as far as I can immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably okay, the abandoning reaction was the unnecessary. pants as I, as I okay. jump out. So you just, uh, you leave the scene as fast as possible. Canyon just sort of silently <laughs> puts his sword away. Uh, and from across the bridge, you suddenly hear a, a sort of scuffling motion from, from around this area. Oh, kitty. Here, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, can I um, press to digitate the smell of you catnip? Can press, yeah, you press to digitate the smell yeah. of catnip. For those who don't know, press to digitation is a very wide-ranging spell that's like, it can be generally described as like mu uh, musician, magician, magic tricks. Like you can make like smells or little visual effects, just tiny things. Um, again, I will leave it up to Canyon as to whether he reacts to, to this or not. <laughs> So yeah, the, the air suddenly fills with a, a potent smell of catnip. Not the actual effect, but the smell of it. Oh, <laughs> shit. I want to I wanna start looking beeps. around. Like, kind of yeah, Okay, sort of just... <laughs> kind of trying to keep it cool, turning over rocks and stuff. Like, where where is this catnip? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like if you just cat the scent of, like, McDonald's yeah. or something. Just like... <laughs> yeah. Is that coming from? So, <laughs> exactly. so you know, as as you're looking around uh, for the catnip and and Glib, I imagine is still kind of a little bit shaken from the the necromancer's appearance and and I'm currently hiding okay, behind yeah. a rock. Just... And SG is is you're you know kitty. a little a little busy looking for a cat that may or may not exist. I'm not going to comment on that yet. From outside, uh, or, or inside actually, I should say, inside of the little skull entrance. You hear a voice shout, "Hey! Get out of here!" <laughs> talking cat? No one sees. There's a talking cat right walk. next to you. Bro, bro, what? <laughs> I'm standing what? right here. Oh like, my god. Cat, it's your owner, Eivard. Come out. I don't think. Just, just get out of here, or we're gonna shoot. Shoot? You don't have the. How you we're? Uh, yes, we're. There's a lot of us. And then you hear some more, some more small voices, kind of like, yeah. How many are? And how many are there in there? A moment. Some goblins start to make their way out of the oh. uh, out of the entrance of the fortress here. Um, yeah, first combat is goblins. It's a nope. it's a classic D and D thing. It has to be something something recognizable. So first combat okay, was you know beast. what, Nikhil, you're not wrong. First combat was technically beast. <laughs> also, at this point, I'm going to put in you guys' characters here. Um, they're at the bottom. They're a little hard to see contrast-wise on this map. I'll try to fix that later. Um, but do you guys have control over these? If not, I can. I'll, I'll give those to you really quick. Uh, let's see. Controlled by. Oh, um, Nikhil, are you in the? Join the roll twenty real quick. Uh, I sent a link to the to the Instagram, and uh, let me get all this set up for you. Uh, uh, Momo and Panda, you should be able to control your characters now. Make sure that those are that's working, and you know, place them wherever they would be on on this side of the of the little map. Someone said, "What about the uh, where, mugger for the first time?" Where is me? I am yeah, so here, small. Yeah, here. Let me. Uh, <laughs> you, you can. I don't know. Are you looking at the? Uh, are you looking at it on the stream, or are you looking at it on the? Uh... I'm looking at it. Um, I'm okay, like. Okay, then yeah. I would. I would. Now. You can zoom in at the top right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're a right. little. They're a little squish. Before we start fighting, I'm gonna. I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick while 
we're start okay, right yeah, before perfect. we start. So you're, you're hiding behind a rock anyway, so you're, that's 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 fine. Yeah. I in fact I'm gonna put me right okay, so, <laughs> in that little so Glib open is hiding. area. Heck, maybe we'll start the fight without him because he's busy. Um Um I I'm just gonna keep myself honest and be like I probably am a little bit in front mm -hmm. of everyone else because I was actively looking for yeah. a cat. <laughs> Understandable. So I'll like move myself a little bit more in the open. Okay, cool. I've got my many water bottles here that I need to move for a character that you'll meet later who I'm gonna need to hydrate to do the voice of. Alright, <laughs> so Where is hmm? where is Glib? Oh, I'm just not seeing him. Oh he's on the he's on the far right. Uh he's hiding in this this if you're looking at the stream, he's right here. Uh, uh yeah, okay. Uh let me make sure that you have your character access, Nikhil, and then yeah. Uh, and then we'll wait for Jay to get back and get into the combat. And I'll, I'll give a little tutorial on how combat works again. I've told you guys before, but I'll do a little brief for the people watching who might not know. Uh, while we're here, while we're waiting, let me sort of uh, address the, the stream again, because there are a ton of people here. Hello to everyone who's here. I hope you're enjoying the campaign so far. I am amazed that we have this many people watching on session one. That is wild. Uh, I think this is going to be a really fun campaign. I got a lot of fun stuff planned. Remember, next week, as you can kind of see on the screen there, Musa will be joining us as a regular member of the cast. Uh, and thank you all again for being here. Uh, Panda is now back. So on that note, we have returned. Uh, so, let's see. This is, okay, this is where I've got my... I've got two monitors up, which I'm not used to using, so i got to make sure that I... There we go. So, and at this point, the goblins have emerged from the fortress, which... They seem to have occupied in the, the absence of Eovard. Like, Eovard's gone, and the, these goblins sort of moved in. So uh, the, the lead goblin here sort of shouts out again, Get out of here, or we'll shoot! Who get out of here? Can this I is my this place. One? I am Eovard. I, uh, Wait, can I just... Can I just magic missile him while he's It depends screaming? on the range. I don't know what the range you've got is. These are, uh, e each of these squares is about five feet. So this would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I know that's not a good, uh, so 120, what is that? That's like 20, uh, I think, yeah, I think that is within range actually. So yeah, as, a uh, as this goblin is, uh, sort of yelling at, a uh, Eovard, we'll call it. You can just kind of pop out of your hiding place and, yeah. and fire a shot, and that'll initiate it. Oh, I, book or I just fire shot over the, the corner of the... I just cover Oh, yeah, fire. that's only 70 feet, so you're good. Yeah. Thank you to whoever everyone in the chat who uh, told me about that. So, uh, for Magic Missile, I believe that is a spell attack. Let me... Hold on, let me screw up the, the scene here as I look at your... I have Eldritch oh, Blast. Oh, Eldritch Blast, yeah, that's, that's what I meant. Blast, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that is a ranged spell attack. So you see above your, your attacks, there, there's going to be a little number that's plus something spell attack. I think it's for you, it's five. Uh, so what you're going to do is you are going to roll a die, and you are going to see if you hit the, the target to hit your attack, which I'm not going to tell you. It varies for every monster, and you guys don't get to know it. And I'm trying to hide Eldritch. Yeah, like it's, the, the, the dice it's, it's weird how that uh, how that works. Motherfucker. It, <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, I a got 16? a 16. Okay, 16 is, is definitely enough to hit. So now what you're going to do is you're going to roll another die, and you're going to roll for damage, which for Eldritch Blast, you can see at the top there, is 1d10, so a 10-sided die. And that is how much okay. damage that it is going to do. Nine. Nine. Okay, hold on. Let me actually pull up. I need to remember the goblin <laughs> health, which I should have written down, but I have my trusty book here. Oh, chat. It's not magic missile. It is. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, Eldritch Blast. I, 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 I spoke the, the wrong. I, I said the wrong thing. That was that was my bad. I believe we joked about it being a, a magic missile earlier, and then didn't do that. Okay, so so it was nine damage. You said that's pretty. So nine damage. Uh, as this goblin is sort of yelling at Eovard. Suddenly, from behind this little barricade, a little frogman hops up and just kind of pew fires a big bolt. Uh, the <laughs> goblin looks over at it just in time for it to catch him square in the face, and he is sort of just <laughs> steps backwards. 
looking very confused, looking pretty pretty hurt. Goblins aren't super strong. Uh, and and for before people start rules luring me in the chat, these are my goblins. They're a little different than than normal ones. Uh, but the goblin looks looks pretty hurt. And after sort of just taking a second, he goes attack. <laughs> that voice crack came in a good time. All right. So now, this is the first time I'm gonna say it, and you're gonna hear it many 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 times since. Roll for initiative. So what that is, this is you know I've been over this with you guys. That's determining turn order. So what you're going to do is you are going to roll a, a dexterity. It's basically just a flat dexterity roll, unless you have any sort of extra things for that, which I don't believe any of you do. I have a plus two. Oh, to I have a plus two to dexterity. Let me be clear. I meant it's just a normal dexterity roll unless you have any specific bonuses for initiative rolls, which I don't think any of you do. I know you have different dexterity stats. Oh, just kidding. Oh, then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, 13. Okay, 13. Let me... There's a way I can do turn order in a... Oh, there we go. Add a turn. I got... It was dexterity, right? Uh, yes. Dex just a flat dexterity right, I got 24. Uh, let me, let me get everybody in, and then I'll rotate again. This is my first time using, using roll 20 as a DM, so you'll have to bear with me here. Okay. Uh... I okay, got You got eight. an 8. Fan fantastic. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually actually going to turn on light mode. It might contrast a little more. Sorry if I just blinded anybody. Uh, Nikhil, what did you get? I shot this motherfucker in the face and then ducked behind a wall Sorry, again. One more time, Nikhil. 24. 24. Wow, you're probably going to be going first. And Mobo. Uh, 13. 13, okay. And then we'll add in these little goblins, which are... I can't reach the add a turn button on this because they're too small. Uh, add a turn... And apparently that just cleared everything. Thank you, D&D &D Beyond, for being... Or thank you, Roll20, for being not particularly helpful. So, <laughs> it, so you, uh, I, I have a different view of this than you guys do. And it's... Uh, I'm going to have to move these goblins. Because with the so high up on my screen, the add a turn button is off my screen. And I can't click on it. So we're just going to move them up and then move them back. Mm. Okay. And now, everyone tell me your things again. I know it was 24, 8, 13... Okay, Correct. 24, 8, yeah, 13. That was it. And these goblins, let me roll for them. And I'll do that manually because I like rolling dice and I have so many I better use them. Uh, that's another 8 for the lead goblin and then his little crossbow buddies uh, get a not Nope, that's the wrong one. Get a 9. And the other little crossbow guy, which is the one on the right, is going to get a 17. So he's actually he's pretty fast. 17, enter, and if I do that, does that reorder that? Okay, cool, that does it in descending order. So, you guys can now see this on your screen, yes? Uh, or yes, I, yeah. uh, and I can see it on mine, perfect. So, combat has, of course, begun at this point. Uh, you know, normally there are ways for you to diplomacy your way out of this, but not when someone shoots an Eldritch Blast at the Goblin Leader. So, uh, thanks, for, uh like, they're angry goblins. There wasn't. At least I'm doing something and not looking for a cat. <laughs> there weren't a lot of options out of this one anyway. So this is in sort of inverted order than what you would think. Uh, Nikhil, obviously, you are going first with a 24 roll. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see you on the bottom there. Uh, do you remember what the actions are? Or do you want a little a little rundown of, of how actions work? A little rundown. Okay, so you can if you have your character sheet up. Uh, you can move yeah. up to your move speed, and that does not have to be in one big movement. You can break it up into little chunks, and you can do sort of one action. And that would be an attack. That would be like a dash. I believe we went over that in the little tutorial. Things like anything that's more involved is going to be an action. For you, since you're a rogue, you can also take a free action to dash, which is basically you can double your move speed, you can hide, or you can get out of a fight. That's dash, hide, or disengage. And you can do those for free. And a little a little tip, uh, since this I picked sort of a weird map for the beginning fight, but this is sort of the only, uh, the only one that really mm. fit thematically. These guys are going to come to you. Normally I would not say that, but you know, this this is sort of map necessity. Don't necessarily feel a need to charge over the bridge. You can if you want, I'm not gonna stop you. But they're angry goblins. They're going to be charging you as well. So, Nikhil, you are up. Your first turn. Feel free to hit me with any okay. questions. I feel like I can't do Yeah, much. you can't do too much yet. Away. But again, they're, they're going to come to you. So you can sort of just set up and get ready. 
Yeah, okay. I mean, I'll yeah, just, just move well. to where you can move, like, up here or up here. You don't have any long-range weapons, right? You just have your rapier? Yeah, I got... Well, I have a... Sorry, yeah, uh, if you have your crossbow, crossbow, you could fire a shot off at one of these guys. How much uh, is the it should the say somewhere on there. Let me let me pull it up for you and, and see. Uh, cross light crossbow. I'm assuming you have a light, not a. That is eighty, which I believe yeah. you do have. So let me. This is the farther one. Nope, not that. This. Here we go. Ninety-five feet. So if you move fifteen feet up, then they're in range of your of your crossbow. Oh, lit. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move 15 feet up. Yeah, and, and then you should have control over your character. You can either click and drag them, or you can use the arrow keys once you select them. And each square is five feet. One, two. Yes. Can I move diagonally? And yeah, I know that kind of screws up the range of each square being five feet, but that's just kind of a, a general a general thing. Well, I liked it. And then how do I shoot? Uh, just bitches? basically tell me that's what you're going to do, and then I'll tell you. So you, you want to shoot? If that's what you want to do, I'll walk you through the... Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'd like so, to shoot. So what you're going to do for that is you are going to roll your dex... Uh, for, okay, let's say it like this. There might be a button for it in uh, in roll 20. So if you're on your... Not roll 20, in D&D Beyond. I'm going to call those the wrong thing every single time. So if you go to your roll 20... Uh, in your character sheet, under Actions, uh, which is, you know, on the right. Is there mm, one yeah. that says Crossbow? I'm looking at that as well. I'm pulling up your character sheet right now. Um, uh, okay, there's not. We didn't put your, your weapon, but that's fine. So then if we're doing it manually, what you're going to do is you are going to... I'll just walk you through. Roll, first step, roll a 20-sided die. Yes. 20 sided die. Um, is there just a button that does that? For uh, D &D on D&D Beyond? Beyond there, uh, on that yes. and Roll20, either one. If you're on, if you're doing it in Roll20, uh, if you look at the, the stream, these things in the top left, there's one that is like a little weird polygon. That'll pull up a dice roller for you. Like, ah, I've, I've been using it. physical awesome. dice because I have so many. Uh, I just want to get use out of them. But. So this is... D20, and then there's like a 2, it's a just, 3, it's, a 4, Yeah, it's five. just how many, oh, so just click the D20. Yeah. Uh, and I can look at your chat here. So you have a 9. So then what you're going to do is to that number, you are going to add two things. You're going to add your dexterity modifier, because crossbows are a dexterity weapon. And since you're good with crossbows, your proficiency modifier. So looking on your character sheet right here. So that'd be plus yeah, 6. Yeah, so total. that would take your 9 to a 15. Uh, and 15 is enough to target the the goblin you do hit. For future note, you can if you don't want to do all of that math, uh, in the little chat bar, which which Twitch kind of can't see because Rule 20 has a, a very long layout, you can type like I believe it's uh, it's just like slash roll d20 plus six. Yeah, that worked. I got a nat one, but thankfully that was just a DM roll example that doesn't mean anything. So you do hit the goblin. And so now you're going to roll for damage. And I don't. the damage for a crossbow is an eight-sided die. So just click a d8. And then okay. add your dexterity modifier to that damage, since it's a dexterity weapon. So that would be, what's your dex? Uh, plus four. That's a six. Oh, That's six four. damage, which is quite a bit. Uh, so, yeah. The combat has now started. The goblins are about to turn over. Uh, shortly after Glib fires off his burst, Canyon's sort of ready for action, pulls out his crossbow and fires at, uh, I, which, which goblin are you, are you trying, I forgot to ask, I, the middle goblin, okay. The middle. Uh, oh, wow, you actually did, perfect, so after, uh, after Glib fires off his very high damage blast, you manage to follow up with a quick shot right in the same place where Glib hit, and the goblin almost immediately falls over dead. <laughs> Those targeted hits are uh, very effective, and these guys are not really fantastic. So the first goblin has already been killed. Don't worry, there there may be more on the way. Uh, so let's see how how do I uh, how do I delete how do I delete these characters? Uh, boop. So the first goblin has been destroyed. 
Uh, but now it is both of the crossbow goblins' turns. And they are not super happy at Canyon for killing their little band leader. So both of them are going to take some, some shots at you. And the, uh, for note, I go through the exact same process that you did. I'm just doing it, you know, for the monsters. I have their stats pulled up. So I'm going to roll a 20-sided die, and I believe this one first. Well, it doesn't really matter. I think this is the right goblin. Uh, I need a better dice tray, man. Uh, okay, so that goblin got a 14. So, Nikhil, the number I need from you, what is your AC? It should be on your character sheet in the, uh, like, like middle right-hand side towards the top. 14? Oh, okay, 14. so that's perfect. The goblin got a 14. And players win ties. That's just a general rule. I don't think I don't know if everybody plays it like that. I don't know if that that's in the official rules, but that's that's the way I do it is players win ties. So the goblin sort of fires off a, a shot at you, but with your cat-like reflexes, you sort of bend over and are just barely able to dodge out of the way of that bolt. However, there is a second one coming, which I will roll. This is the goblin's second action. Or the other goblin's action. And that goblin got a 19. So that one does manage to hit you. And it is going to do... What did I say crossbow damage was? Uh, a d8. Okay. I don't have a d8 out. There's a d8. That one's going to do five damage. Uh, so... I'm noticing that your hit points on... on D and D B are on a one. That's probably a glitch, right? <laughs> uh, I want to say let's yes. <laughs> assume <laughs> that you have more health than one. Um, like, I feel like twenty okay, is an yeah, okay. You know what? Assumption. That's fine. Maybe maybe that's too much or too little, but we'll we'll readjust for future things once D and D Beyond isn't glitching. Mm-hmm. So let's say you have twenty health to start. Uh, as you skillfully dodge your way out of this first goblin's arrow, unfortunately, you aren't able to dodge them both, and the second one kind of scrapes your back as you're moving, drawing a, a line of blood. So you take five damage from that. Yep. Uh, all right, who is next in the order? It would be Momo. Oh, wait, oh, well, I forgot to have them move. I, right. I forgot to have the goblins move. That's They need to move. <laughs> Go ahead. So they're going to start kind of rushing down this bridge. Uh, I should probably just be using the arrow keys, huh? That'll be faster. Goblins are speedy little boys, so they're gonna start start heading on towards you after firing at Canyon. Momo, you're up. All right, um, I'm gonna use my movement first to get within like 60 feet of them. Each one of these squares is five, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so that's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm gonna stop obviously okay. right here. Um, and I'm gonna. I'm still. Yeah, like, you're still. EMR, you're still so in the form of Evar. Uh, the goblins are a little, a little okay. shaken by that, um, but not as much as you would expect. Which I'll, I'll leave as a, a you know, yeah. a mystery for now. Um, and I'm gonna cast dissonant whispers, and I'm, I, I kind of want to throw my voice so that it sounds like I'm whispering from behind okay. them. Is that something that's in the spell? I'll, I'll just, trust you. I'm not really sure what your spell is. It's it's not but in it's the good, spell, it's good but enough. Yeah. I wanted to. Yeah, that's add some you can flair. flare it. And the whisper is, "Get out of my house." <laughs> um, I don't know if I hit though. Oh. <laughs> Please hit. Uh, is that a saving throw spell or a? Um, it is okay, a saving okay. throw. So what's, what's, actually the, what's saving the saving throw? throw. I'm right. uh, a quick D and D tip for anyone watching who doesn't know. If it's a spell attack, that means the player rolls to hit. If it's a saving throw, that means the target has to roll. And what it would generally be is like these, yeah. uh, for these goblins, a good example is like this is sort of like a mind affecting thing. So it's like, is the goblin's will mm-hmm. strong enough to resist the spell? And they're goblins, so probably not. What's the, yeah. the DC on that? Yeah, they must make a wisdom saving throw. Um, I think my, what is my spell save? I think it's 14. DC okay, save 14. is 14. Let's see. Um, and if they fail, they take 3d6 of psychic damage um, and must immediately use the reaction if available to move as far as its speed allows Okay, from cool. Uh, so I'm going to roll for the goblin on the left first, just for note. Uh, he's actually okay. The left goblin under- understands, uh, understands what's going on. I guess living in the fortress of a necromancer sort of gets you used to this sort of stuff. But the other goblin, nope. Other goblin is is not okay with that. Uh, uh, so go ahead and roll damage for the goblin on the right side of this battlefield here. Yee. And I'll zoom in a little okay, bit. Okay, three, things six. Are, things are closer up. All right. Um, that's going to be seven, seven damage. Seven damage. Okay, cool. 
Uh, so this goblin seems, you know, ter- you said he had to use his action to move. Is it next action to move as far away? Um, it says reaction if available. Reaction if available. As and, far as and that out. reaction is available. So well, uh, mm-hmm. come on. Come on, little goblin. There we go. Funny enough, all the way is actually back into the fortress. So uh, this <laughs> goblin, we'll just we'll put him over over there for now. We'll put him over there for now. Uh, and with that, uh, Glib, Glib, you're back up. Unless Momo, you had anything else you wanted to do? Oh cool. no, that's that's it. That's so the one effort. goblin's still there. The other one has has fled back into the fortress. Hmm. Um. Let's see. What do I want to do? <laughs> um. So Eldritch Blast is like basically a laser. I want to see if I can knock them into the green ooze to uh, see what it does. Okay. Um, now it doesn't necessarily have a knockback effect can... on it, but like if you do enough, if it no, if you it do doesn't. enough damage with like the explicit purpose of trying to knock them back, I I might allow it because I like creativity stuff like that. So, can I use Unseen Servant and push him in? Um. So Unseen Servant is basically not. Here, here's the deal with Unseen Servant, right? Um. It is not meant for combat situations, but it's also really vague on the rules. So I'm going to say you can try, but it will be hard, you know? Like, it, the the number that the okay. goblin is going to have to get to, to survive that is not very high. Okay. What if I just cast Hold Person and freeze that one goblin there? Th- so then I can go and just work. push him in. All right. Okay, yeah, so that, that is another wisdom save, I believe, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's your DC? Right. Uh, DC for 13. that one is 13. Okay. Uh, yeah, the goblin is is frozen in place. <laughs> he's sort of like, as he's loading okay. his, uh, his next crossbow to presumably fire another shot at, at either uh, Eovard or Canyon, he sort of just stops. How far can I jump? I believe 25 feet. Hmm. That is definitely not the no. distance he is. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump 20, 25 feet uh, to the bridge. I'm going to start getting okay. closer. And I mean, other other people are, are up next, so you might be able to, or one of them might be able to do it for you, because next up is uh, is Canyon. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, go ahead and, and jump. I can, you can, this little wall that you're hiding behind is not tall, so you can go, you can go over it if you want. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where 25 feet. Yeah, is. there's okay. You cool. I was just about to suggest the uh, the ruler. Another easy way to do it is just um, use the arrow keys and just count how many times you click. So 25 feet is five squares. So just gotcha. Go five. There we go. I think that was it. Yeah, cool. That was it. That was right here. And then yep. There we go. Uh, all right, cool. So unless you have any other yep. actions, it is Canyon's turn. And I will say, all if right. you want to, I'll give you a little a little tip here again. If you want to try to knock that guy into the ooze, he is. I I placed him very close to to the edge of this bridge. If you get a good crossbow bolt into mm-hmm. him, he might be tipped over. I, w- I would I would very much like to knock him into some ooze. You're very far back. Yeah. You might have to. I well, think your crossbow actually probably has enough range. I would get a little closer if you're trying to knock him in, though. I mean, I, I shot somebody who yeah. was farther away. You, you can you can hit him, but if you're trying to get him like, to can... fall over, I would say get a little bit closer because I'm gonna I'm gonna twist the rules if you're doing that that goal specifically. So, I can move my full like speed. Yes, and and movement action, right? and actions are separate things. You get to move and do stuff on your turn, and for you, so you I actually have... get to move twice if you want for free because. You're a rogue, and rogues are fast. So I can get right up. Yeah, on the best, is what I'm hearing. You could you right, could actually just push 30. him in because you have your bonus action where you can dash. So that's yeah. You that's you can exactly move thirty and then use for. your rogue like bonus to action push. to just move the extra thirty and then just tip him over. I would love in the middle of this just knock a guy into a thing. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna make you roll anything for that. He's he's on the edge, and you're. Not trying to like lift him or anything. You're just, you know, you're just, you're just tipping him. 
very and casually dip this guy into the the necro ooze. Uh, I will say the um the result of him being tipped into the necro ooze is maybe a little bit underwhelming. Probably because he is paralyzed at the moment, so he can't really like scream or anything. But you know, he falls in and sort of sinks into the ooze. Uh, it's not a, a, a great no. outcome for him. He he he's sitting there paralyzed as his bones dissolve. That's what you just did to that guy. Is what's happening. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, his bones specifically. Well, I was sure. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's what that ooze does now. That's. That is horrifying. That is the most disgusting thing well, I can it was, think of. I was just kind of, I was just kind of using like a generic <laughs> term, but the, yeah, all right, sure, that's what that is, does now. So I just said the goblin got <laughs> Baja blasted. Right no. Anyway, <laughs> with the little raiding party, uh, the little raiding party either killed or or fleeing, you you hear something very interesting. Uh, coming from the uh, from the entrance to the cave, and I'm gonna switch us off the uh, off the battle map for just a second here, and I'm gonna put Is it SG's my map? my camera back on. So, sort of uh, as you're looking around, expecting another wave of goblins to come swarming out. A, a moment later, you just hear. And. A, uh, a small group of goblins comes out, leading with one carrying a very rusted, very old trumpet. Uh, and a moment later, four goblins, each carrying, I don't know what they're called, but they're, you know, like those little throne things that, like, people carry on their backs? Yeah, yeah they, they walk oh, yeah, out yeah, yeah. carrying a basically identical-looking goblin. All these goblins look pretty much the same. Uh, except this guy has a crown on yes, his head. So this little goblin, you know, he kind of walks out. And after he stands there for a moment, the, the trumpeter finishes his song and pulls out a scroll and unfurls the scroll and he goes, Presenting King Spigo of the Goblin Lands! And sort of bows. <laughs> <laughs> and Spigo just kind of sits there. How tall is a goblin? Uh, probably around the same height as Glib, three-ish three -ish feet. Nice. I'm the same height as this yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, you're about the same. Uh, maybe they might be a little shorter than you. I would say you're like slightly taller than them, which is you know a rare experience for Glib. Okay. Very strange. Um, are they all uh, deceived that I'm Eovard, or are they like for real sure that that guy? Uh, they they don't see. I'm not going to tell you exactly exactly what happened. Also, why did Momo's camera just shrink? I'll fix that in a minute. Uh, uh, they they don't seem as scared of you as. They, you would think. I'm not going to necessarily say why, but they don't seem hmm. they don't seem specifically terrified of you. So after a few moments of, I guess, awkward silence, Spigo kind of speaks up. He goes, "What are you all doing in my lands? These are my lands. This is my house. No, no, you no. Eovard's corpse this. is sitting right in the doorway there." That We're using it as a coat rack. <laughs> no. You, you can You're you can roll deception. Liar. You can roll deception <laughs> if you want to. Yeah, roll, roll deception, deception if you want to convince him. I'll roll deception. Oh my <laughs> god. Have, it's like no, that is my coat rack. I have a uh, coat rack of myself, dead body, it's an art piece. Okay, don't be right, rude yeah. about it. I'm sitting here uh, <laughs> trying to talk to Canyon. Like, is he, is is this fucking real? Is she, is, are they joking right now? Is this? Are they trying this? Um, that's, that's a seventeen. A 17? <laughs> okay, God. well, I mean, let me roll for for his. I, let's see. Uh, eighteen. <laughs> eighteen. God damn it. Spigo oh. is Spigo is a, a pretty a pretty pretty smart apparently. Very deceptive. So as, as Spigo kind of looks you up and down again, he goes, "No, no, you're the coat rack guy, I think." <laughs> Fine, and then I just change back to normal. He sort of like jumps, and all all the goblins okay. jump, and one of them kind of like falters with the throne, and Spigo reaches down and like slaps him a little bit. <laughs> I'm 
I'm just gonna lean over. You guys. It was a nice try. It was it was worth a shot. It was, thank you, thank you. They, I, it was some of my best work, honestly. They, they, they're dumb. It could it could have worked. <laughs> they're supposed to be. No, <laughs> I'll have you all go ahead now that Spigo is is sort of out in the open. Roll perception, all of you. Oh God. Come on, come on. The perception. I am supposed to be okay at that. Yeah, the perception rolls so far, Momo, have seven. been just abysmal. Oh, 21. there we go. One of us is smart. <laughs> oh, okay, 22. we got a 21 and a 22? I'm dumb. I, okay. I'm going to correct that statement. So, it's not so one of us is smart, one of us Glib, is Glib <laughs> being far back, is, is still pretty occupied with trying to figure out whether he or the goblins is taller. That's what I'm going to say. That's what's occupying his mind right now, and he's not really doing much else. They're back uh, to back. Both... Right now, Canyon and and uh, and SG though get you know the dead ones a bit more useful information. Uh, the first thing that you notice, you know, these goblins don't look particularly fancy. You notice that the the little goblin Harold, uh, you get a peek at the scroll that he is using. It seems to be some sort of shipping manifest. It definitely doesn't have anything like he said on it. You get the idea that he probably doesn't know how to read. Uh, but one thing does stand out <laughs> among this little group of goblins, and that is that Spigo's crown is surprisingly nice, actually. It looks old, but, like, it, it seems to be real gold. There are some gems in it, and it does not match anything else. Even the throne that he's using is, like, you know, sticks and wood cobbled together. But his crown is pretty is pretty nice, actually. Can I, I, wanna... uh, can I use my tentacle tongue to snatch the crown? Uh, I don't think your tentacle tongue can reach across the bridge you were still behind if you want to try to, to creep forward i i want okay so so you just sort of right. uh so canyon sort of walks up and to well i'm also like <laughs> seven feet tall like yeah. i feel like this is very easy i should be able to just bend down and pick so yeah, you you uh you, well he's you know he's like he's probably like six feet in the air so he's still a little a little below you but uh some goblin guards kind of like hold up some spears and block your way as you're as you're trying to get close to him. He goes, "Hey, hey! I don't want any trouble. I just want to know what brought you to my newly renovated fortress." Oh, it's newly yes, renovated. Yes, I, I told you about the coat oh, rack, right? It's nice. We want nice. your shit. Nice. Just from the other side of the bridge. We want what's in there. What do you, he kind of he kind of looks he kind of glances at Canyon sort of suspiciously and then calls back across the globe. What do you want? <laughs> Your what, shit. What, what 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 specifically? Y'all got pants? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well, if you don't have pa pants, have you at least seen his cat? cat what? He kind of just he sort of pauses and then points at Canyon, confused. No, not this cat. I don't. Cat. I don't know about any other cat. Is he sort of lean, he leans down to his Harold and goes, "Is there a cat in here anywhere?" Harold shakes his head. We don't have a cat. Useless. Absolutely are you sure useless. you don't Edward. have pants? Uh, no, they none of them are wearing pants. They have like loincloths and damn it. bad <laughs> goblin clothes. Not even Spigo. He's got his he's got his crown uh, and like some really cheap looking armor. Can I just uh scream back what y'all got in there? We got lots of stuff. If are you here for like for like magical crap? <laughs> we don't we don't need it. If you want it, you can you can come and take we don't want any trouble yeah. here. We're not picky. We just want some yeah, magic crap shit. sounds good. I'll take magic crap. Yeah, we'll take it. So I can see <laughs> You know, I don't want any more bloodshed. You killed one of my guys. I don't know where the other one is. He kind of looks around as you realize you did push him into the acid. Um, but so I want to tell you him. Can, you can just jump what in. What so, man? <laughs> goes, did he have any identifying features? I don't remember who I sent out here. There's green goblins. Okay, so it was... Sans so it bones. Was, so it was Philip. <laughs> That's probably fine. <laughs> someone, someone, go tell yeah, Philip's wife. Philip. Anyway, so uh, he uh, he sort of signals the guards to like back off a little bit. He goes, "All right, in the name of King Spigo of the Goblin Nation, I would like to to propose a sort of treaty. We don't need any of the magic stuff in here." He gestures. He gestures back. None of us know how to use it anyway. So, in a, in exchange for peace, you may take what you want and be on your way. 
Uh, and then... Uh, no. Can we deliberate? Uh, yeah, yeah you, can, you can sort of convene and deliberate. Yeah, huddle up. Let yeah. me speak with my colleagues. We'll be right back. So we're just going to take their shit, right? And then leave? Yeah. yeah. They don't I'm have not, the cat. Like, I didn't have a reason to come here. I followed the frog. Or the frog asked me to take him here. Dude, I, well, I what do you need directions. from here, Glyph? Uh, I, I'm still looking for some sort of amulet of defrogging at some point. They might have it. Let's just yeah, get the, some of their stuff and then... Even if they, they don't, don't have, have the cats, it. We if, even if they don't have it, I mean, we can probably resell yeah. the shit somewhere. Like, yeah. And, like, you kind of valuable. killed the dude that had the information I needed. So... It's, it's debatable. You killed one dude. Two I, dudes. I killed, I killed one dude. One the big out. cat killed the other guy. That's not my... I just stopped him. That's... If you would like... Another prisoner. We could take one right now. I'm not sure I got, these are bad people. I have two pants that are too big. We can fish the pound of flesh of the other oh. guy out there. His brain is I, I have a question. Bone. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Would SG have any reason to believe that um, Sprigo has the information? I uh, need? Probably not. Sprigo is just kind of a, a, a random guy. You've never seen him before. He's The, the vibe okay. that you got, I'll go and tell you this since you got such a high perception check. It seems very much like, mm -hmm. you know, this fortress was recently vacated after Eovard's demise, and these goblins just sort of took it because mm -hmm. no one else wanted it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we can just take their stuff and yeah, yeah. we take the shit. Oh, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll just go and take the shit. Whatever. Mm. Right, so so. As we'll we're walking shit. past them, I, I want to like measure myself. Okay, so you sort of walk feeling. up and measure. You are yeah, a thinking. little a little taller than most of them. You know, they they range in height slightly, but okay. on average, you're a little a little taller than them. So so it's big. Okay, so so you accept. Just like so so you walking. accept the offer then. <laughs> God. Yep. Yep. Accepted fully. Excellent. Well, I'm we'll glad to have shit. brokered the first treaty of the Goblin Nation. Harold. And he turns to his herald. I like these guys. Call off the failsafe. Uh, and upon hearing that, the herald's they, eyes go very safe. wide. And he sort of like gives a curt little nod and he turns around and walks out. But the second he is out of Spigo's eyeline, he starts booking it as fast as he possibly can down the uh, down the tunnel entrance. Okay. Can, can I... Hey, now that we're, you know, allies mm -hmm. and everything, brokered peace and all that... Um, what the fuck do you mean by oh, it's fun. Harold's gonna go turn it off. Harold's Harold's great. He'll 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 handle it. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. That sounds great. But what the what 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 was the what was it's, the backup plan? What was the, not, uh, we got this guy. He's you know and, and as Spigo is talking, you guy. hear a roar. A roar is maybe not the best word to describe it though, as you've never heard anything like this before. It's coming from the mouth of the tunnel, and it has a quality that that none of you have ever recognized. I would call it, and we would call it, as players, reverb. It sounds like weird, sort of synthetic reverb, almost, coming from the mouth of this what? kid. And a second later, uh, the Herald sprints back out. Right before he gets into to Spigo's eyeline, he sort of just, you know, comes back to his fancy persona, and he walks back around and goes, Spigo, I regret to inform you that the failsafe is already in motion. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Spigo's eyes... Spigo's eyes kind of kind of drop. He goes, "Oh, uh, okay. Um, can you guys guys scoot out of the way a little bit?" Uh, and he points forward, and his his little goblin people just start carrying him as fast as they can across the bridge. I I like the visual that none of us are moving. We're just watching <laughs> no. all of this happen. I'm, just like none what? of you have told me you're what? moving yet. Hold so. on. Um. Can I can I yell back? You still haven't told us what the hell that was. As he's like leaving into the yeah, distance. that's a really good like, question, huh? <laughs> uh, what about the magic stuff you promised us? It's in there. Oh. Go go go! Take it. You can deal with it later. Uh, and as feel free, yeah. uh, I'm gonna switch us back to well, I'll, I'll switch us back to the battle map in a second. So uh, after you know, as all this is going on, the the reverb roar is sort of continuing. And uh, a moment later, you see a strange glow from the tunnel. And after a second, you see a goblin in the distance. Uh, but it doesn't really look like any sort of normal goblin that you recognize or the hands that you fought. It's much bigger. Its form is sort of warped and distorted. And it's covered in patches of weird sort of iridescence. And if you take a look at the Symmetry War logo that's on the screen, 
the, uh, the left-hand side of that, there are sort of patches of that pattern all over its, its skin. Everyone roll perception on this thing. Come on, come on. I, got oh. I heard an 18 or, or an H. What was that? 18. That's much better. 18. Oh, and I got you, 11. Why did, okay, I got a 18, four. 11, 4. Uh, so the the people who got 11 and 4, or, uh, Glib, you can't really see too well because the tunnel kind of slopes down slightly and you're very short, so you can't see, see it much. Shit. <laughs> I'm loving all of the convoluted reasons. That oh yeah, I, I love improv. It's fun. <laughs> I have but, I have so many fucking cool powers, and I am nerfed at every oh, yeah, you'll, corner. You'll get to use more of them as we go. But uh, oh, great. SG, beautiful. You see this thing uh, again? As I described, yeah. it's sort of like a large gob. Its form is very much twisted, almost as if these iridescent patches are sort of uh, shifting it. At one point, even an extra arm made out of the same iridescence is kind of coming out of its side. And Canyon, you sort of notice the the reason that this is happening. The iridescence follows a veiny pattern almost, and there's a shard of what looks like almost like a stained glass made out of the same iridescent pattern jammed into its shoulder. And the sort of corruption has spread across it and seemingly mutated it into this gigantic hulking form. Uh, now let me find the uh, the asset that I'm... I don't have custom uh, assets for what this is yet. I will get them, but for now we're just going to use an alien. Uh, yeah, this, this mm-hmm. looks good. Mm-hmm. Will it be the right size? No, it will not. Let me scale that scale that bad boy up. There we go. This looks about right. Um, let's see. This looks about right. Um, let's switch back over to the battle map so, here. And uh, and ooh. show you the very large monstrosity that has sort of clawed its way out of this tunnel. Oh, yeah, you're right there. <laughs> The goblin does sort of its its reverberated roar one more time, uh, and yeah, let's let's go ahead and roll that initiative a second time for the second half of this combat. Oh no! Initiative, initiative is just your dexterity? Uh, basic dexterity roll. Yes. Can I edit these? Oh, I can. Okay. Um, and then um, yeah, right, I got cool. seventeen. Let me, uh, let me add for the the redacted creature twenty. Uh, okay, 17. I guess I gotta double click that. 17. You said 20? Cool. Um, that's 10? gonna be a okay, 10. That's, that's the middle of the road. It could be could be quite a bit worse. Now let's roll for the monstrosity. Yeah. yeah. The monstrosity. Oh, lucky for you, the monstrosity got a 1. Which I, you know what? In lore, in lore, Ooh. that makes sense. You heard its arrival. You were You were prepped for it. So, uh, so the monstrosity yeah. is here. Combat has begun. I'll zoom in a little bit more since we're uh, since we're ready here. Uh, and turn order. I didn't hold on. It didn't update right. Boop. There we go. Uh, I don't know why. It, no, don't don't give me that order. This is like shuffling it, and it's really weird. Uh, there we go. I fixed it. Okay. It's an advancing. Th- it, oh, okay. The button uh, advances yeah, it. Enough. It doesn't. Re- I figured it out. It only took me seven tries to figure out what that did. All right, combat has begun. Glib, you are up first. Okay. How are you gonna deal with whatever the heck that thing is? Um. Okay. So I have true strike, which lets me know uh, an enemy's defenses. Oh, that, okay. By mm-hmm. by pointing at it. Um. Grants you brief insight into a target's defenses. On your next turn, you will gain advantage on your first attack roll against the target, provided the spell okay, hasn't cool. ended. So, uh, I'm gonna. That's a. That's one of my at will things. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna cast True Strike, and then jump way back. I'm gonna jump. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm already. Yeah, you're. You're back. the farthest back because you're. you're yeah, I'm not gonna jump. the bone bridge. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just point at him. I don't need to go anywhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure okay, out. Okay, so defenses. true strike. It, it gives you uh, an insight into this this creature's weaknesses, and it lets you have advantage. Okay, so with that, I'll flavor that a little bit, give you a little yep. more information about this creature. So you can see, obviously, this was some sort of normal goblin, but has been changed by whatever shard is is <laughs> in its in its side there. You get yeah. the sense that uh, magic 
is going to be more effective on whatever this uh, this this type of creature is. Since you can sense weaknesses, I'll go ahead and give you that. And and don't okay. worry, Nikhil, the non-magical character. This is not everything in this campaign is going to be magic week specifically. <laughs> All right. Um, I can only do one thing per per action turn. Oh right? wait, hold on. Nick is in the chat. Thank you, Nick, for uh, amazing. Nick Edger is the guy who did all of our character art. So thank you to him. I appreciate that quite a bit. And yes, it, oh, looks, yeah. am- it looks amazing. Thank you, awesome. thank you. Uh, and I have your little link thing down in the in the description under the Twitch, Nick. Anyway, continue, Panda. Uh, I'm only able to do like one attack. Thing, yes, right? at the moment, like, yeah. I did the I did, I did the sense thing, and I'm is- just all right. So I'm gonna yell out to everybody before the turn ends. That's uh, magic. Use let me magic. Uh, True strike isn't a bonus action, is it? I I don't think it is, but it could be. It's the same thing as my eldritch blast, or at least it's in the same. Okay, category yeah. Let me uh blast. let me pull up the th- list and look at it really quick. Because bonus, if it's a bonus action, that yeah. means you can do something else on this turn, which is something that you might definitely want to do. People in chat have probably already told me whether it is or not, but I'm already on D and D Beyond pulling it up, so I'm gonna finish it out. Okay, true strike. Uh, one action. Okay, yeah. So, it is just one action. Okay. Yep. I'm just, I'm just gonna go. Uh, All right. So yes. Magic. I'm gonna scream that to both. Yeah. So that uh, the the weakness has and been has been fleshed out, and that will maybe give you a little bit more insight on what exactly is going on later. Uh, but Glib, unless you want to do anything else, that would move on to Momo's turn. Uh, no, I got a ten. Oh wait, is it out of? Uh, Why is it out okay? Of order, I can manually shift. I can I manually shift. It. We're uh, good. We're good. I no, sorry. That was. I got like. I'm still. You, it's really weird because like there's an autumn. You put in the turn order, but then you have to manually do it yourself. Just, anyway, so yeah. Anyway, Canyon, Canyon, you're up, and I would run. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna bolt. Oh, and just for um, note, you can. Uh, you don't have to move so. first. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get a, a strike in and then and then move, you can do that. Technically, you would have to disengage, but I'm not going to worry about that because this guy is sort of walking up right now. Well, I can also yeah, you, you have a bonus action for that, oh, so it doesn't really it. matter for you as much. Um, for those who don't know what disengaging is, uh, basically, you know, imagine you're in a sword fight. If you're in an intense sword duel with somebody, you can't just run away or they're going to stab you in the back. So what disengaging is, it takes an action, and in lore it would be like you smack their sword away in a big arc, and it gives you an opportunity to run away without getting attacked. And Nikhil can do that for free, because he's a rogue and they're fast. Um, yeah, so for shits and giggles, since I could do both, I guess I'll take a swipe at it with my sword before I bolt the hell out of it. Yeah, uh, so you're going to you know roll your attack the same way that I showed you before. Let me get my... What's the most thematic dice that I have for for this kind of thing? This one works. This one works well. It's in shadow here, but it's you know purple and shiny. My my uh am I here? Yeah. Okay. My computer crashed briefly. Oh, okay. Your 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 video is a little laggy, but uh I can still hear yeah. you at least. I'm gonna assume that chat can because it looks fine on Twitch. Other than just laggy video. Trying to run this the critical role and the Twitch was really taking a lot out of my uh. Yeah. <laughs> The <laughs> roll twenty. All right, roll twenty. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a fifteen. I'm glad you can. Yeah, do I, have, I, can I have. I have again. I have a second monitor with the the player view. The the thing that the players are seeing on screen, I have really big on my second monitor, so I can look at all everything. Uh, okay, so a fifteen right. is going to uh, hit this thing fairly barely. It's big, but you know, it's big. It's slow. It's not super fast. So you can go ahead and roll for damage on it. All right, and I roll for damage with the D eight. Uh, yeah, whatever whatever is marked on your rapier, which I believe is a D8, yeah. I, I, don't know. I saw Hold one. <laughs> well, well, you do get to add your uh, dexterity to it, so it's going to be a, a five. You're, you do a lot of damage, but that's that's rogues. So, uh, <laughs> but again, you're using a, a physical attack. So you stab out with your rapier, wanting to get in one hit before booking it away from whatever this thing is. And your rapier hits one of the iridescent sections on the creature and almost, like, sinks into it as if it's kind of, like, squishy and liquid. Uh, the combo doesn't really seem to like it, but it's not bleeding or anything. You know, it's it's hurt, but not as much as it would be uh, had you hit another area or had it hit uh, been hit by something else. So you did damage to it. But whatever the corruption nice. is sort of dampened it. And um, now, I'm, uh, now I bolt. 
Can I still move? I can't move 60 because I already used my extra move, right? So it's just 30? Uh, no, that's that's every turn. You can use a bonus action to... to... No, but I mean, I just used the bonus action to disengage. Oh, yeah, then then yes. Yeah, then yes. Yeah. Then right. I'm back here. All right, so you have, have suitably booked it. Uh, now, now it is Momo's turn. Okay. Um, I don't think I... I might be in range, actually. What is that? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, Ice Knife. And that's going to be like, I'm going to say that it like basically comes out of my skin, like an ice, a knife yeah. made of ice. And I chuck it at this being. Um, I do have to roll the hit on that. I, All uh, right. Please hit. That's a seven. <laughs> seven. A seven is not going to, to hit. Uh, you fire off. Oh, it does say, it does say, hit or miss, the shard explodes. Okay, well, uh, you know, you actually got really lucky, because what I was going to say is I was going to say that it sort of smacked yeah. it out of the way. I wasn't going to say you missed entirely. So what does the explosion yeah. damage do? I'll, yes. I'll say the explosion damage still hits it. Um, it says, it says uh, hit or miss, the shard then explodes. The target and creature within five feet of it must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 2d cold damage. Okay, cool. 2d6 cold damage. So, dexterity throw for this thing, and again, it's it's big, it's fairly slow, but it was still, at its base, a goblin, so it doesn't yeah. have the worst decks in the world, and it got a nat 20. So, oh, it, it, it shrugs me. it off completely, no no damage whatsoever, and actually, for, for those who, who don't know, I use, nat 20s mean good extra good things happen, nat 1s mean extra bad things happen in general, so... Uh, not only does it does it sort of shrug the explosion off as it is able to do this, it steps a little bit closer down the bridge. <laughs> not by much, Ooh. not by much, but just a little bit. Uh, Ken Kenyon, are you hiding behind me? <laughs> you got this. You're seven That's feet tall. Not... I'm hey, at your height. You, you got this. I believe you. I don't I... got this. We see. I don't got this. <laughs> I'm not as magic. as you guys are arguing about the best the best <laughs> placement for your for your party members. Uh, it is now the monstrosity's turn, so it slowly starts sort of lumbering down the bridge towards you, <laughs> and oh, it Jesus. does get within. Is that overlapping? Yeah, there we go. It gets right right up oh. on you, <laughs> and it raises its blade. The corruption has also. I, did, I didn't mention this. It's got a weird sword. The corruption seems to have extended to its blade as well, and it raises it up and slams it down with another sort of reverb roar. Uh, onto, onto, uh, SG. What's your, what's your AC? Well, 12. It got an 11. It got an 11. Yes! So yes! You, as I you're needed arguing to win. with, I needed with to win. Canyon, uh, you whip around just in time to s barely slide out of the way of the, of the monstrosity's massive blade. Oh, that was oh, a, that was a, a close one. That, and no and funny enough, it would have been hit. out of your range had you not gotten the nat one beforehand. So your luck, your luck flipped <laughs> just, just there. Or it, it got a nat twenty. You didn't get a nat one, but you, you know, it's luck flipped. Canyon's getting hit in the face with like rubble and shit from the yeah. sword hitting the I mean, ground. Like, <laughs> Canyon does not take damage, but the sword did slam like like six inches in front of your face. So. <laughs> uh, but on that note, that uh, swings back around to Glit. Okay, uh, I got all of my spells and shit are really dedicated to like knowledge and, mm -hmm. and which stuff. will be helpful in, in a like, lot of scenarios. Trust me on that. Yeah, yeah. Other than like, I have like unseen servant that's not going to help very much. So I'm just going to eldritch blast yeah. the motherfucker. As and as that a helps. warlock, eldritch blast is the core of your kit. Yeah, good. That's that's all not right. just you like then building I'm, it bad. Like that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Wait. Can I move yeah, and then you can, attack? Uh, you can attack, then move. You can move, then attack. You can also move like half your movement and then right. attack and move the other half. It's very open. There's no set order on your turn. I can move. I can move 25 yeah, feet. Yeah, because you right? have a little shorter movement speed than everyone else, but it's because you can climb and swim. So it's just a balancing thing. Okay. I'm gonna jump behind him and then Eldritch okay, Blast. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a gap there, but for no, so, I'm people wondering. Uh, Gleb has a standing uh, Gleb has a standing leap of 25 feet, so he can cross that chasm. Yep. So I'm going to jump up behind him onto the bridge, and then I'm going to Eldritch Blast okay. from behind. Make your attack roll. 
All right, the hit is 14. 14. I don't remember this thing's AC, but it is a magical attack, isn't it? So yes, that uh, that hits. Okay, and then my damage. Ha ha, 10. 10. Okay, good. Uh, so the magical attack does not seem to uh, to have the same resistance. It hits the uh, the iridescent patch and sort of it makes it bubble slightly almost. Again, this looks sort of like a liquid when things hit it. Uh, and the goblin okay. screeches with that same reverb. It definitely did not like that, whatever you just did. Okay. <laughs> uh, swinging back around now to Canyon, who should get the heck out of there as fast as he can. It's gotten so much closer. <laughs> Most of the sword is six inches yep. in front of you. Um, I'd like to. I'd like yep, to leave. Yeah, that's a good idea. I feel like this is this is gonna be the <laughs> whole like fight. Is just Canyon <laughs> pokes it and then runs, and the thing chases him, and then Canyon pokes it and then runs, and the thing chases well, him. Okay, and what I'm is over here shooting at yeah. him. As he's running. What? <laughs> Keep him distracted, Catman. Yep. I got it. <laughs> What is an action again? What can I do that's not fighting? Uh, so you you don't have to disengage because you're not the one that it's actively fighting. That would be uh, that would be Momo. Mm. So it's like um, you can move. You can take an action, which is pretty much anything that's involved with like attacking or like trying to open the door from earlier would have been an action. But that's uh, it, we weren't in combat. And then with your free bonus action off rogue, you can dash, disengage, which you don't need to, yeah. or hide. I'm not- I'm definitely using the the dash thing at the end, yeah. but uh, it's currently fighting Momo, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah. So can I try and see if mm. I can pull the the glass? I also out forgot of it? you have a sneak attack as well. Look at your sneak attack stats. That will that will matter. Uh, but yes, you can try to you can try to pull the the shard out of its shoulder for sure. Yeah, I wanted that sneak attack says two. Yeah. So basically, if people don't know you're coming or they're fighting somebody else, you get to do extra damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, no, that, that's a good out, that's a good call. I'm just saying for for future note. Uh, so, let's see. I th- let's see for this thing's tall, and it's in its shoulder, so it's pretty high up. Make an acrobatics check to see if you can sort of clamber up. You've got a good foothold with the sword because it's heavy, so you can maybe like jump off and and get up to the shoulder. Just make an acrobatics check to see if you can pull something like that off. What? Oh, I got a seven. A seven? Okay, yeah, seven. Seven is not gonna do it. So, you uh, you jump onto the sword, and as the uh, as you do this, it attracts the thing's attention, and it rips the sword out of the ground really quickly, causing you to fall back off. Make a dexterity saving throw, which I believe is uh, you get to add your proficiency bonus to your dexterity as well, because you're a rogue, uh, so you would have dex saving throws. Okay, well that would be then. The saving 22. throw is twenty two. Uh, yeah, so even though you fall, you are, you're able to get back up. You clamber your, you know, uh, you don't fall to the ground. You land nimbly on your feet as a cat is expected to do. Uh, and you're not, you know, stunned for the rest of your turn. You can continue moving. I will also say if you want to use your um, your bonus action to try to do that again, I will allow that because it is a movement-based thing. If I do that, can I not run away, though? You or used your that? action to try to clamber up once. I'll let you use your bonus action to clamber it up again. You'll still have your move action afterwards. Oh, fuck yeah. I'll cool. do it again. Sure. But no, the risk is if you fall and don't make that saving throw, you're going to be just on the ground. I I have a plus four of dexterity and a plus four of acrobatics. Eventually, eventually it'll work. All right, try, take it again. From yeah, acrobatics? Same, same exact thing. That doesn't look good. I got a five. Okay. Uh, make the saving throw with disadvantage, because this is the second time that you've tried it. Roll a d20 twice and take the lower result. Oh, uh, so I don't get a use uh, No, it, it's the... You add your bonuses to it like normal, but you're just taking the lower of the... Like, you're literally just rolling twice and whichever number is oh, lower. So I just roll it two times. Well, the first one was a nat 20, so I guess we'll uh, do yeah. the second one. Wait. Okay, it's okay, still yeah. So you you do manage to make that up. So you're you're on the uh, on your feet again. Basically, nothing has changed. You're still sort of in the same position that you were. Though, I guess actually, I'm gonna move you like here as you got a little closer. Someone in the chat, the Panda Red and Nikhil fan fiction when? <laughs> I mean, we're you, making yeah, it. we're we're making it right now. <laughs> that's, that's all up to y'all. y'all yeah, we can't. We're shit. not fans. We're the people. We can't write it. It's not a fan fiction if we're writing it. That's <laughs> autobiography. 
and it's coming <laughs> soon. All right, so you can run, but you've used your actions, Nikhil, to try to clamber up. Yeah, yeah. I'm, out, I'm out of there. I, I gave it my best mm. shot, y'all. I'm sorry. You're, right. <laughs> You're just going to leave me here? <laughs> hey, I gave it my best Roll for shot. book it. That's like a classic... <laughs> A classic thing that always comes up in my community. You don't actually have to roll, but roll book it is a, an inside joke of sorts for, for my my campaigns. All right, so yeah. Uh, Canyon sort of tries frantically multiple times to scrabble his way up to the goblin's shoulder and, and pull the weird shard out, uh, but eventually fails and just leaves. Uh, at which point it is then SG's turn. Okay, so... I see that we're in a bit of a pickle here. So can I um, uh, can I do my bonus action before my action? You can I do, do my them in any order. Okay, so I'm gonna do bonus action misty Smart. step to right next to Glib. Um, and I'm going to attempt to do dissonant whispers at um. For, for no, a I'm assuming level. I'm assuming misty step doesn't provoke opportunity attacks because you're literally just vanishing yeah I don't so, think someone so. in the chat said um said that canyon would have to get an opportunity attack he's technically not like I'm, he's not the one actively fighting the monster so i didn't do an opportunity attack on him mm -hmm. but yeah so you misty step with without any worry there yeah i missed you step and i'm right by glib now you know what let me go behind glib <laughs> Everyone's Don't hiding behind. Why is everyone behind hiding me. behind the person who's shorter than them? Because if you stack it, it's like it's Canyon <laughs> hiding behind oh, SG yeah. hiding behind yeah. Glib, and that is an an upwards angle. <laughs> yeah. Smart people. Yeah. So that They're way, when I do my, my shooty shoot thing, I'm not yeah. gonna hit Glib. So anyway, yeah, I mean, my distance is me. <laughs> my distance <laughs> is I just. I throw my voice again, and so the creature. I don't know how intelligent it is. It's. It sounds like I'm still standing okay. in front of it, but I'm not. And I say, drop your sword and jump and jump. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah. So um, that is a DC 14 uh, with some saving okay. throw. Let's see here. Whoop. Uh, it does not make, but it's, it's close. It gets a, a 12. So it looks okay. really confused as sort of the uh, the person that it was trying to to slam into dust has now vanished, but he mm -hmm. can still hear it. it. Sort of looks around, confused. It kind of just like it does drop its sword. It puts it on the ground, but then it just stays there. It does not throw itself off the edge, but it, it has dropped its weapon. Okay. And I can't make it do that on the thing. This is this is one image, but no, the the blade is dropped at um. least for now. So that's 4d6 psychic damage. Dang, that's damage. a good spell. All right. All right, come on, please. I got to <laughs> not roll like shit right now. Okay, that's 15, 15 damage. damage. Okay, good. Uh, this thing is start... Uh, how exactly does it... It's, it's psychic damage, right? So that's... Okay, I'm trying to think damage. how to like describe that, and that's not easy to do. But so it puts its sword down. And then sort of you hear it do another one of those weird reverb screeches as it clutches at its head. It's clearly in pain from some sort of unknown source. It's starting to sort of like heave a little bit more. It looks like it's definitely getting worn down in some capacity, though, since you aren't really sure what exactly this thing is, it's hard to tell exactly how harmed it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and on that, is it, uh, is it the monster's turn now? So, uh, yeah. You have you have put yourself in a good strategic position, uh, because uh, SG is gone. It has no idea where SG is, and Glib kind of leaped over as it was busy paying attention to trying to shake Canyon off and uh, and you know attack SG. So it does not know where either of you guys are, and that means the only person in its sights is Canyon again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to continue the the the, the little game of. Of cat and goblin monster. Oh, oh wait! Oh. Before before you move on to the canyon, um, I forgot that a part of dissonant whispers is that um, if it fails, it takes the damage, but also has to use its reaction to move as far away. Which from is unfortunately also pretty much just towards canyon. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, really, it doesn't really change Sorry. much, but you're right. So two, three, four, and then I'll there we go, uh, and I'll sort of tilt it tilt it towards you and just for flavor we'll get you get you right in there yeah. i believe that is still its movement range so you're good there uh all right so 
Uh, oh, it did not. It did not pick up the sword though. The sword is actually. You know what, Momo? That's what your spell did. Because I was gonna have it pick up the sword, but since it's since yeah. it's running away at high yeah. speeds, it did. It did yeah. leave it. It says as far as its yeah. speed allows. Uh, so it kind of it gets ready to sort of slam canyon and then realizes that it left its sword on the ground, but decides, eh, screw it, mm-hmm. and just sort of double fist slams down. And what's your AC? Yeah. Mine. It misses. Uh, uh, so the cre- clearly disoriented by the the lack of sword and misjudging its range, it slams down kind of on either side of you, not really hitting you directly. Uh, and that is its action. So we're back to Glib. <laughs> so back to can Glib. In- I'm just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> can uh, can enthrall? Uh, do they do let what me I look say? At the, let me. There Do are so many spells in D and D. Let me look at the. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Any. Uh, it has disadvantage on. Okay, so this would. Um, basically, what enthrall is is it sort of makes somebody focus on you so that someone else can sneak around. So it says it has disadvantage on perception checks made to perceive anyone other than you until the spell ends. So, like, to, you know, to use an example. You could enthrall it, and then, like, it would make it a lot easier for Canyon to sneak by, since its attention would be focused on you. But with Canyon directly in front of it, enthrall is not going to pull its attention away that much. It's a, it's a, it's a strategic okay. support spell, not really a fighting spell. It's a good strategic support. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I'm just going to Eldritch Blast him again. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. I'm going to keep shooting him in the back same, as he runs same, away. Same thing. You know the drill at this point. So, the 14 of to hit again. 14 hit, that does hit. Yep. And I got a 9. That's still that's still high enough. Uh, Canyon, I'm going to need you to make a dexterity save. Okay. Get, Get out, out of the way of the collapsing body. body. May have been doing this wrong, but I'm taking. I take. I take the roll and I add the number next to dexterity. Yes, right? and or you could just click the number next yeah. to dexterity. So I rolled a fourteen, and, and I have. Yeah, a that's force, that's so fine. 18. This was this was really just yeah. to make sure you didn't get a super low roll for flavor. But yeah, as you're sort of dancing around this monster, strikes another blast from Glib strikes it in the back, and it sort of wheels around to look at its attacker and gasps for a second, and then falls over onto its back. But right, right where Canyon was. But Canyon manages to sort of leap out of the way. So the monster has been defeated. Good job, everybody. You beat your yeah. first mini boss. Yay. Wasn't a super hard one, but you beat it. <laughs> Wasn't a super hard one. <laughs> Wait, but the, the sword the is still, there. still it's, here, it's right? Big. Are you uh, actually on? on okay, on. so it it doesn't look like I can lift it. But can I make a strength check to see if I uh, can? I actually, you're. Uh, I I sort of misspoke there. Because I realized something. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sword seems to be just sort of a normal goblin sword again. After being disconnected from the goblin, the corruption has left it since it is not near the shard. Aww. And it is it has returned to can a I, normal can state. Can I take the shard mm-hmm. now? Can yeah, I take you can the go shard and take now? the shard. So it. you manage to pull the shard out. You grab it. It sort of, it feels incredibly odd. It's a little shard of, of, you know, what looks like glass, but again, it's the same sort of iridescent texture. For, for reference, I'll point out, look at the Symmetry War logo in the bottom left. It's what is on the left of that. It looks like it maybe contains some sort of liquid, or it's very hard to describe mm-hmm. because it looks solid, but it reacts to touch and things as a liquid would. You can see little ripples and things across its surface as it touches. And after holding it for a second, it starts to burn real bad. <laughs> No. Um, I whoa, uh, let me see if I have any spell slots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding. This is a cantrip. I mage hand it out of um Canyon's okay. hands so that it's still we yeah. still have it, but it's not to hurt uh, us. Now, a moment later, after hearing the uh, the slam, you hear a voice from the uh, the tunnel that you came in, not the fortress entrance, but the tunnel. Uh, did you did you take care of it? <laughs> Did you, did you get it for me? Yes, this I did. Thanks for that, I guess. Real quick, the chat wants Panda to drink the goblin boss's blood. Oh, uh, for a note, when, when the shard is removed also, it, it shrinks down and becomes a, a normal goblin again. 
Okay, so, so you stole the one thing that would <laughs> can. All right, uh, I will one hundred percent drink its blood while while they're like, "Did you kill it yet?" <laughs> and then I just look up from the guy and just be like, "Now stay there for a second. We're all no, it's up. fine. I don't mind. I've seen people drink blood before. And he sort of just uh, Spigo gets his uh, his little guys to carry his throne out again and goes, "So, uh, sorry about that. Is the truth still on? Is that still good?" You know what? I, you know, we're gonna say yes for now, but if you're on Fortnite, that's understandable. Are there explain. more huh? goblins? Is there any reason to believe there's more goblins? I mean, probably, yeah. Like, like there's this is a you don't really know, but goblins come in large packs, so there's there's five okay. goblins in front of us, right? The king, so, the herald, and then other three people. Six, because there's the people. king, the herald, and then his four throne carriers. I'd like to shoot one of the ones who's holding the, the carriage, who doesn't have a name. Maybe not lethally, but I to, to express All right, yeah, my yeah, so anger, roll, like roll to, to, um, to hit. When well, Canyon mm -hmm. does that, can I have a, a conversation with uh, Spring, yeah, Spring it's, Spigo? It's Spig Someone in the chat actually just got it right. It's S-P-I-G-G-O. And they said he has a Grokel Stan voice, Wait, which almost catches, which always catches me off guard, which is good. Thank you for that. You saw what I was going for. But yeah. yes, you, you can... You can speak to Spigo, and then we'll do the little shot in the middle of it. So, mm -hmm. Spigo, my companions and I are not happy. As you can see, we were almost killed by your goblin magic Yes, creature that's understandable. Thing. We're going to need something in exchange, and what we need is your crown. Give it to me right oh, now. Oh, that, uh, I was, um, how do I say this nicely? Hell no. Can I, shoot can I do an intimidation? You, you can roll, roll intimidation. intimidation, yeah. Uh, which one? Yeah, I have a plus four okay. to intimidation. And actually, we'll do so. this at the same time. Do your roll, and then we'll do the little shot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I want to yeah. shoot the dude. Holy what'd, you, what'd you get? A 10. A ten? <laughs> okay, let me... Uh, so... Do I get that? Advantage or disadvantage or absolutely so nothing I'm, added Hold on, let that. me see what his roll is, and then we're going to do Canyon's little shot. Yeah, he 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 does not seem uh, deterred. Canyon, roll to hit one of the goblin holders. Yeah. What is that? It's your shot. Just an attack. Say, it's the same thing that you did for your crossbow mm -hmm. shots. So it's it's dexterity and then your proficiency bonus. Because right. you're you're shooting him with the crossbow, right? So, yeah. All all yeah. attacks so are going to be the same whether they're in combat or out of combat. So it's seven. Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely enough to hit. I mean, these guys are, uh, and you, you were going non-lethally, right? Uh, close, close to, to lethally. Lethal. Okay. Maiming. So we'll say you shoot him kind of like in in the <laughs> shot yeah, in the like in the shoulder, uh, <laughs> close to the heart, but not, but that you know that does cause him to falter and sort of drop the throne and dump Spigo out onto the ground. Can I cast intimidation <laughs> now that he's on the ground? Because I want to be standing over him, holding the corpse of his failsafe, drinking it, and go, is that a no yes, that's, still? that's excellent. <laughs> Great. I will actually give you advantage because I love that. That's The, the drinking the okay. corpse pushed it over the edge and gave you the advantage. Great, because I just rolled an, a 11 for... Is that right? For the intimidation, mm. plus what, what advantage are we going to oh, go yeah, with? You can roll again to get a better you just roll score. twice and take right. it higher. Can, can I no. use the helm yeah, action? Help. Okay. Great. Eleven is still better. <laughs> Sadly. Right. Uh, and and uh, SG is gonna add to your intimidation display here. We'll see what what yeah. she gets. What is? Uh, what do I roll for help again? Oh my gosh. Um, I think it's just it, you just do another intimidation check, and uh, I'll I'll combine the two basically. Okay. The chat consistently reminding us that. God damn it! That's a seven. Holding up his pants yeah. is amazing. Well, that's eighteen. That's right? it. I don't think, uh, I don't remember the exact things on help, but it's not. Um, it's not just a flat ad because that could be really overpowered. Um, I'm gonna roll again for Sp Spigo. Did get lower. Uh, so, Spigo now on the ground, having been dumped out of his throne and you know pretty much all of his seemingly self-imposed titles of royalty stripped from him, looks very scared. He goes, uh, I can't, I don't, I can't <laughs> give you the crown. I've, I found it and it's, it's important to me. 
Okay. Is it like it, attached to your head? No. I, do you know how crowns work? It's it, he kind of like okay, like holds hold it up on. an inch. All right. Can it. I decapitate this motherfucker? No, no, no. I'm wait, wait, wait. It. Hold on. I'm just gonna drop the body of this guy on top of Sprigo and then take it while he can't move his arms. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That I have that works. Just, I have zero uh, zero issues with that. I'll hand it straight over to SP okay. though. Just like yes. Okay, drop here. This is. I take it and I add it to my outfit because I like. Okay, how it so looks. you you have the, uh, <laughs> the, the somewhat this tarnished is... but still very fancy crown on top. I'm curious, is it is it under your hood or over your hood? Over um, hood. it's over my hood, and I use prestidigitation to make it look okay, shiny cool. and nude again. So Spigo is is not very happy with this at all, and is kind of uh, struggling to get this uh, this body off of him. But Spigo is also not the strongest of goblins, uh, and and as he's you know crying, having a little tantrum on the ground, uh, his herald kind of comes up to you and he goes, "Apologies for all that. We we really are truly sorry." <laughs> Can I it's, announce it's, this guy's the new king? <laughs> yeah. uh, do you, I, if you want to say yeah. that. Yeah, I like this yeah. guy. This guy's nicer. He's in charge. Oh, God, no, I don't. I guess Big O on the ground is like, no, no, not him. I want to kill, I, I wanna kill all four of the goblins that we're holding. These guys are so <laughs> violent. Oh. And I'm going to minor illusion a crown that's like the one I'm wearing on the new guy. Okay, so a lot of, you just said a lot of things at once. Um, no, no, I'm Sorry. trying to think of just the order of operations here. So, so before the Herald can sort of finish, uh, he is sort of, uh, ascended to royalty, whether he wants it or not. Oh, also, where's the, where's the shard at this point? Are you still just kind of holding it in the air with, with... Oh, I'm still just like, kind of like, it's next to me. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's just sort of, it's just sort of there. So the, the, uh... The little herald guy, uh, he sort of like reaches up and touches the crown, and his hand goes through it because he's just an illusion. Uh, just an illusion, and he sort of shrugs and he's like, "Eh, whatever." Uh, the goblins that were holding Spigo's throne, uh, there's a brief pause after uh, after the new king is announced, and then they just start cheering. <laughs> They're, you know, they're <laughs> absolutely freaking out. Uh, they, they seem very, very, very happy with you. One of them kind of, like, takes the throne and runs past you and chunks it into the acid pool and then runs back. You know, he's, uh, he's... It seems Spigo wasn't really that popular. Wasn't really that popular of a Anarchy! king. Anarchy! Uh, and, and, all you know, they, they crowd around Glib in a non-threatening way and are, you know, thanking thanking you and everything. They seem they seem pretty pleased with everything that that has just gone down. You still finna murder Yeah, you still you still gonna murder yeah, him? Man. I'm gonna kill all four of them. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? You can't canyon canyon. We don't need to do this. We can literally just get the treasure at this point. Man, we, we get the treasure. Leave. We got we they got a new king. I asked. There are other goblins. He could go rule those goblins. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna die. Canyon, relax, dude. This is so. Please don't not kill Gucci my new book. subjects, if you don't mind. <laughs> we just. Right, well, I at least we want to finish off what I almost. Killed. You want to what? I want to at least finish off the one I almost killed. Fine, you can kill one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you you finish off the one goblin. Uh, the others are shockingly undisturbed by this. Goblin society is not one that, you know, has a long life expectancy, and they've sort of become numb to it by now. Uh, but the uh, the Herald sort of approaches SG and goes, uh, so there's the little matter of that, and he points at the shard. <laughs> yes, it, this is, what is this? Actually? Uh, Explain. Is, is that not what you were coming here for? We just kind of assume. Mm, can I roll some kind of... What check should I use? I want to know if giving a yes or a no is going to affect you can, what You can roll insight to sort of get a, another... Uh, like, like more insight on yeah, what, he's, like what he's thinking. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be... That's going to be a cool, cool Yeah, uh, he... <laughs> 
you you don't you don't really you don't really know. Other people can roll insight as well if you want to try to get up better. You're all right next yeah. to each other at this point, so yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Um, hold on one second. I left my thing. <laughs> my cool. I'm not going to roll it just because I, I'm imagining that Glib's probably just staring at the thing, wondering if he stabs himself with that, if he can unfrog himself with whatever yeah, the hell that that's was. That's a reasonable question. I, I'm going to say don't. Insight, I only got a you only got, yeah, so not a, neither of all... you really have any, you don't really get you any no information that might this. be of, of use. I can. I, I'm gonna ask a really dumb question because I'm still. I still love it. This guy is dumb. I'm just gonna look at the goblin and go. Have you tried stabbing a frog with this before? Is it, <laughs> uh, he kind of looks at you and he goes, "Yes, actually, it did the same thing." And he points at the dehydrated corpse that you were carrying. I love the idea of that. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, I'm just gonna mumble to myself, just be like, "Bigger would be better." <laughs> and then, <laughs> And just I'm just gonna gently okay, float so it away. Just sort of <laughs> yeah. scoot it a little bit farther away from you. Uh, but but in the he, he, the herald kind of pipes up and goes, uh, "Seriously, I don't I don't know entirely what it is. It's a it's a whole thing. We found it." And he just kind of trails off. Okay. Okay. Um, so we know it hurts. Hmm. So we, I'm gonna assume. Can we, can we huddle up? I'll be like, give yeah. us a moment and hud huddle them all up. We know, we know that these guys hmm. are fucking stupid. They have no idea what this stuff is. They were gonna hand yeah. over whatever magic shit they had inside. They, uh -huh. they don't know what the hell this is. We don't know what the hell this is. Let's just get their shit and let's go find someone who knows what this is. Because agreed, agreed. Because we have an issue though. We can't touch this thing. So I was thinking, can I have your pants? Not the ones he's you're not, wearing. He's not wearing the pants. Ones that you did steal. I abandoned. <laughs> they're still they're still over on the ground. I'll yeah, I'll go over and get the pants and then like yeah. wrap up the shard. Okay, so yes. So and I'll like, can I air. can I make it into like almost like a fanny pack? Thing yeah. So sling. so you have the shard. Yeah, like a sling. In a in a safe in a yeah. safe place. Uh. And the, the, the herald kind of notices you doing this. He goes, so, so you're taking it then? He goes, uh, yes. Are you God, no, get it out of here, please. Uh, <laughs> we didn't find, we, it's not from in here. And he points to the fortress. It was something that Spigo found. Do you From where? From where? Yes. I see, I don't remember. He said he, f he doesn't look like he walks very many places, so. I oh, see. <laughs> Did anyone That's go with him? That's why he's the king, is because he has that. <laughs> he uh, he huh. found it under under Rift Reach. Now, Rift Reach, Rift Reach is a name that all of you recognize. Rift Reach is a town, really a city is a better word, that is sort of to the to the southwest of where Lauderton is. And again, we'll have a, a map of this place later. I just didn't have time to get it up yet. Uh, Rift Reach is, for lack of a better term, the New York City of this world. It is a huge area. It is in the center of the continent, almost dead center. Uh, those of you who were, who were there at the beginning, so Nikhil and Panda and anyone in the chat who's been there, you might remember one of the first things that I said in this campaign was in the history of this world, at least according to legends that might be fake, there were these massive earthquakes that caused splits in the ground. One of them was at Rift Reach, and it is this massive, seemingly bottomless ravine that almost perfectly split the entire continent from north to south. Rift Reach sort of sprung up around this place. That's why it's called Rift Reach is because it has these huge bridges that are literally like spanning the, they are reaching across the rift in the earth. It is the biggest city anywhere nearby. It is the trading hub. Pretty much anything and everything can be found there. All of you though, roll okay. history real quick. I believe history is, a, is that a Pathfinder stat? <laughs> history's here, history's here. Roll, here. roll history. I have it. Oof. Come on, seven. come on, history. <laughs> Uh, that's well, a um, four. Real quick, sidebar. Nikhil, you didn't, um, Yo. you didn't have an origin, like, location for your character yet, right? He was just sort of from wherever? Uh, I mean, I, like, I, like a, I a have general, a okay, place. cool. Okay, yeah, me uh, message yeah. me that later, because that might be related to, to Rift Reach. But anyway, what were your, your history rolls? Four? Uh, um, four. Seven. Seven. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Uh, now, 
Nikhil, I think I know where your character is roughly going to be from. So you have been to Rift Reach before. We're going to go ahead and say that. And the 11 is, is good enough for this. There's an interesting word in what the Goblin Herald said. He didn't just say he found it in Rift Reach. He found it under Rift Reach. And it's fairly common knowledge. Underground digging in Rift Reach is heavily regulated and basically banned because people are worried about the instability of the ravine that it is built on. So if, if Spigo found it under Rift Reach, something is very weird there because there's not supposed to be anything under Rift Reach. Uh, but yeah, so the, the Herald kind of continues. To, he found it under Rift Reach, brought it back here. We tested it on some stuff, frogs. He gestures to Glib. And uh, yeah, no one really... Uh, no one really wanted to question his his power after that thing. We call it change glass. Change glass. Change okay. glass. Change glass. I thought that was. Did a it cool all name. do that? And I point, and I point over to the uh, to the drained corpse and go. Did it did it do that to everything? And different creatures become different things, but it's all the same general thing. Mm. Okay. All right. So it's a mutagen of some kind. Also, Momo, your camera's really tiny I'm again. Sorry. I don't know what happened. I don't no, know. I can't change it manually. So, because it's, it's, oh, wait, it did actually. Huh. Okay. Well, I fixed it. Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Oh, but yeah, so the. All right. So, all right. Can I go? All right. We change glass. It's under Rift Reach somewhere. No one has any idea where he, where he came from. He just went in and got it. Were were y'all lying about the shit that's in there? Is it just uh, this uh, change glass or no? No, no there's there's stuff in there here. I, I swear it on my mother's heart. And he gestures to one of the goblins. Hey, go get mom's heart. It's it's in the jar by my bed. I'll swear. <laughs> mom's heart. Mom's <laughs> heart. Heart. No, 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 no. no. That's okay. Like no, that. are, are we good? Is it okay? I can. If you believe me, I won't have to go through the whole I think thing. You should get the heart. Don't listen to the cat, man. He's crazy. Um, <laughs> Hold on. Now Momo's really big. Uh, what, what I don't know. Do? It's letting me Why change it I manually, so it seems like it's... I, I have no idea. Whatever. Ah. I'll fix it again. Anyway, continue. Okay, so... Uh, we'll, we'll go back there and get what we need. And I think we're good. Guys, are we good? I turn around and, like, gesture to everyone. Like, that doesn't really seem to be anything here. Other than I'm, dumbass McGee over here went under into a mine and found a piece of glass. We still have the 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 magical items that they're supposed to be giving us. So please right. bring us to those, Harold. Uh, the Harold kind of nods, and he uh, he sort of pauses for a second. He goes, "It's King Harold now." <laughs> and then, uh, oh, all right. And not King not Harold. in not in like Don't a, a not in like a rude way, like like a confident like he's no oh, like he's okay. pumping himself up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, not, he's not being, he's not being rude. King Harold. Harold was his name? He wasn't Remember, all of Harold? these guys are illiterate. <laughs> they heard, they heard <laughs> yeah. that kings have heralds, and this is what they have yeah. now. <laughs> yes, yeah, so King Harold. So King Harold, uh, he sort of leads you in, uh, and, you know, you, you go into the entrance of the fortress. It's a very creepy place, seeing as it's a fortress of a necromancer. There are more goblins scattered throughout, going about their, their regular days. They all seem very confusing, or not confusing, confused, seeing uh, Harold with the crown and Spigo not coming back. Spigo, by the way, is uh, you didn't kill Spigo, did you? Yeah, okay, no. so he's still he's, just having a, he's he's still having a temper tantrum course. outside. Um, so... Yeah. You enter the uh, fortress and you see, you know, these, these goblins sort of looking on in confusion. Uh, most of the place seems to be looted. Uh, not really, you know, sure where all the stuff went. It probably took a couple days for the goblins to get here and being right next to Slaughterton, uh, probably got looted pretty fast. But Harold leads you to a, uh, what looks to be some sort of... In intentional secret door but it was just left open because the goblins don't seem to care that much and and within yeah, the secret door here. there is a lot of gold on the ground and just various artifacts scattered everywhere it's not a ton of stuff but it's it's some stuff this gold might come in handy on the road yeah do we do we have a bag of holding of something that we can so, store stuff uh, in 
it's not like like massive pile like dragon horde piles of gold. You can just kind of keep the gold mm-hmm. on your on your person. We'll say there's. Yeah. I okay. mean, I'll get you off started with a, a big a big nest egg. Let's say there's a hundred gold pieces in cool. there. Cool. That's that's quite a few. Okay. That'll, that'll last you for a while. Uh, I yeah. have. And then the <laughs> artifacts are just there's there's a staff. There's some weird crystals. There's a skull with Ew, like sort of yeah. several gems embedded in it. I would like to take the skull and put it on the staff and walk out with that. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. It, I mean, it doesn't really like it doesn't really stick, but you can like hold it there. No, I'll just like smash it through into the works. Roll strength to see if you can just smash the staff through the magic skull. You really like breaking <laughs> things, don't you, Canyon? It's not break. I just gotta break the job part so I can go on the staff, have a cool staff. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, roll roll strength to see if you can smash through it. Got a nine. A nine uh, no, that's no. You can't. You can't find a way to suitably yeah. stick the skull on the on the staff. You can you can that's tie weird. it on later, but you can't smash it on and carry it out. Um, so, can I be can I be a bit of a dick here, and I like to minor illusion the skull talking to canyon like hey don't do that okay this man's got an obsession with death so, that might make him want it yeah no, I so this... want it more now i'd like to i'd like to leave the staff and i will keep this okay as my so friend. uh talking so there you, you have now. the uh the i guess some sitting on your shoulder somehow you have the skull i i did spend out of this guy like out of character real quick i did spend a lot of our fight trying to find the skill that i knew i had that let me talk to dead people because oh. i was like i want to kill lots of people so there, i can talk there, to them later, i will say I there, if you find it there <laughs> are a lot of dead people in the sort of hallway out of here remember so you might be able to, to find, this is a necromancer's fortress there are a lot of dead people around exactly well, spit on my brain I... apparently it's math level so mm-hmm. i can't do it yet but yeah i was really excited but i'm keeping the okay you keep you point. keep the skull yeah, so can I like uh, analyze the room and to like figure out what what can, some of these you can roll Arcana? Do? A stat that I know you're oh, great shit. at. Oh yeah, I got great Arcana. <laughs> let's 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 check it. Let's do this. That's 14. actually not bad. So you can see these these artifacts are definitely magical. None of them seem to be radiating okay. any sort of incredible aura. Um, it, it's sort of in, you know, uh, a midpoint range where they're a little bit out of your range right now, especially since you have a minus one to Arcana. They're not like, they're not Eovard's best things, but they're pretty good. You just at the moment gotcha. don't really have an idea of how to use them. If you maybe take them to someone who knows, they can instruct you on it or you can sell them, whatever. But they definitely are magical in some capacity. Okay. So there's the, uh, there's the skull, there's okay. the staff, and then there is the crystal. Which is like a uh, 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 let's, say, let's say it's pink. It's a pink crystal. Ooh. Okay. Can I get the pink? You can crystal? take the pink crystal. Um, I rolled it's eleven for our Some condo. guy should take that out. Uh, okay, you kind of get the same the Ooh. same idea that um, that Glib does, where it's like it definitely does something, and it's probably it's probably something bad, um, not necessarily to you. But you know, use, oh, okay. using this is is going to do bad things to somebody. But this is, you know, the, the fortress of a high-level necromancer. You're not going to be able to, to identify all the items right off. All right. So it's not happy, happy fun times, but it does something yes. cool. I'm definitely taking yes, the staff, that's... which is way I... taller yes. than me at this point. All right, so that's an item for all three of you. Unknown as to what they do right now, but perhaps they will make themselves apparent later. Uh, okay. And yeah, when you t- uh, cool. and you took the gold. So after you know you you loot up and and SG does her little tricks on the skull, uh, King Harold kind of peeps his head back in and goes, "If if you're done here, I have some kingly duties to attend to." Yeah, we'll be we'll be getting out of your uh, non-existent goblin hair. Who said he didn't um, have hair? Before he has luscious he's a goblin. hair. <laughs> okay, we'll be getting out of your long luscious locks, O King Fabio, and. <laughs> We, oh, uh, I actually have something I, I oh, want to yeah. do. Can I lick the crystal to see if it's like the pink Himalaya salt lamp thing? What the you lick the fuck? crystal to see? Uh... <laughs> is it like it could be a salt well, no, lamp? I, 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 I know out if it it, is. it's not a salt lamp. I'm trying to figure out what licking the crystal will do. 
<laughs> but what if it is a salt? You know what? I'm just gonna look up a. I'm exactly. just gonna look up a wild I magic table. I don't know unless table. I lick it. Can I watch her do that and then lick the skull just for vibes? Okay. Yeah. I don't so I'm anything, since I since I don't know what that will do yet. I'm literally just gonna pull up a wild magic table, and you're gonna get to <laughs> oh, see no. what, what that does. Canyon falls into. Oh, no. uh, Canyon falls into the perfect little oh, perfect. niche no. of actual fucking murder. Yep. <laughs> like that's. I know that's a nickname, but and like holy shit. Not, I'm from this, places. I live in the woods, and I'll kill anyone who fucking one, talks to me. This table only goes up to 75. It could be a who salt made this? Lamp. There I we don't go. Know. You become invisible for the next minute, and during that time, other creatures can't hear you, which is hilarious because Kane specifically <laughs> said he was watching as you lick the crystal and vanish. And then I lick it. I stand by that. I want to lick my skull. See if I finish. You lick the skull. Your tongue sticks to it a little bit because fun fact, and this is not in D and D. This is 100% real. The way that you can tell the difference between fake bones and real bones is if you lick it and your tongue sticks a little bit, it's real. And if it doesn't, it's fake. I had some really cool biology professors can. who taught me that. So I'd like to I'd like to amend what I do. I'd like to lick the skull and then repeat that exact fact to Glib. Okay, so yeah, you, you lick the skull and you repeat that exact uh, Glib, are you like just Canyon seems unfazed by by SG's sudden vanishing. <laughs> I'm holding the staff, and my first question is, that's the first thing that comes to your mind after one of our party just... I mean, yeah, you're not really attached to anybody into another yet, dimension. But, uh, after, you know, about a minute... Uh, oh, also, I guess, um, Momo, you wouldn't necessarily know that this has taken place. Oh, it's like, okay, so I guess it's not a salt lamp. That's cool. Um... I don't know why. We're, anyway, know let's head out. Maybe she's a, she, they're, they're left back there. It's I'm, fine. I'm right Just here. Complete. I'm right here. I also Let's, like the notion that like memories of you are already starting to fade from their mind since they haven't been around. I'm, I'm you right yet. here. <laughs> Notice she was with us to yeah. begin with. <laughs> I have to go through the whole thing Notice again. She's okay. Out. There was only Let two me, artifacts on. here, right? Wait, that's weird. Weird. We're skull just gonna. Staff, no, right? no, no, no. Just gonna. Just gonna move her over there. No, come back. <laughs> anyway, so you uh, they you guys start sort of walking off. After sixty seconds passes, you sort of phase back into reality. Oh hey, where'd you go? I was here the whole time. Once again, you forget my presence. <laughs> what are you talking it's about? So rude. I, I honestly don't remember, don't remember any of that. Do you remember any of that? Not at all. Nothing. I'm, all right, no. We're okay. not doing this again. Apparently, it's not the soul slam, <laughs> but I, it can turn me like invisible. Maybe sometimes. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to lick my skull as well? Hey, you want to try licking the, the crystal? See if it does anything different. Are you, why are you? Yeah, pause. 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 I have never in my life given a party magic items and have their immediate instinct be to lick all of them. <laughs> what have is you wrong tried with you your people? staff? I'm gonna lick Listen, the crystal. My, what happens my to me? tongue is a tentacle. It doesn't really do all that much. And honestly, oh my uh, God. that it just stuck to the skull. So I mean, okay. I'm, I'm not really worried about licking that. Licking the skull and licking the staff doesn't do anything. Does anyone want to lick the crystal besides? I'm, I'm licking the crystal. Okay, let me roll on my Fair wild enough. magic table that I guess I should have had prepared <laughs> before the session. Uh, you cast confusion centered on yourself. Let me see exactly what that does. <laughs> Nothing changes. Let me come let me, on. <laughs> Nothing changes. Uh, I'm never confused. I do. Exactly oh wait. What okay. I was doing. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let me roll to see exactly what happens because there's specifics to the spell. Get confused. Uh, it again. You you literally just freeze. <laughs> you lick it and just freeze for like ten solid seconds. You're just standing there, unmoving. Glib. Glib, I'm just gonna speak to him. us. Hello. I'm Hello. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not. That, that's not me. That's him. <laughs> oh, sorry, Canyon. And you know, after, Canyon. after about ten seconds, you, I'm poking you sort of him with the staff. Pop back into phase. I'd like to then ask Glib if I can lick the staff. <laughs> Stay away from my staff. I'd, I'd like to start to walk the staff. away. Briefly. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> By the way, King Harold has been watching this the whole time, and he got his. So is this like, is this like a thing with you all? You guys like? Would you shit? like to try licking the crystal, King? Yeah, Harold? all right, give it here. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes it, and then and then King Harold 
licks the crystal, so let me... I should have known that you would have done this. I wouldn't have closed the stupid magic table. Uh... Uh... Okay, that actually, no, nothing happens. That's a combat effect. So he licks it and, and it everything seems completely fine. Goblins are... No, but I would like well... to slide a hand the staff and lick it, and then I'll give it back. I just want to lick it. Okay, roll, <laughs> roll slide a hand. It's a, it's a power play. He said no. I'm roll slide a hand. Anyway. I have a plus eight on slide Yeah, and then, and then Panda, oh, you roll dexterity to sort of counter that. Okay, so yeah, you, it's I'm just literally gonna be impossible. Hmm. Super honest. <laughs> I'm gonna be super honest. I'm just gonna end up periodically licking this crystal if anything. And it if also goes apparently down. does something. I think, that's so real. I think next combat we should all just be throwing the crystal to each other. <laughs> you, I like how like it's going to have some sort of effect, but because I was an idiot, instead it has a wild magic effect. If you lick it, that's what the crystals use. That's actually gonna be really funny later. That's gonna be, I'm gonna that's gonna be really funny later. So sure. Anyway, so Harold kind of says, eh, I'm underwhelmed, and he sort of hands it back. Uh, but on that note, okay. unless you guys have any other business in the uh, in the Goblin Fortress. I have one thing I want to do mm -hmm. before we leave. That I don't know if it's in the Goblin Fortress, but, but uh, what's-his-fuck is still outside under yep. a corpse, right? Okay. Uh, can I borrow the shard for a second? Not the crystal, the shard. You can't touch it. What are you going to do with it? Also, you touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. I want I want it in the in the the bag, but I'm gonna go and figure out a little bit more from the source. Okay, smart. Okay. Okay. I, so I'm gonna take it. Hand it over. I'm gonna unwrap just the top of it, so I'm holding it like a prison <laughs> shield. <laughs> I walk over to to the the former king under a corpse and just hover it above him. And go, I'm gonna kindly ask you where you found this. He goes, I, I, I already, I already told you. Well, Her Harold, he seems very frust flustered still after he's still, you know, he's he's fresh off okay. a temper tantrum because I already found it. Harold already told you it was under rift reach. I was digging around okay. down there. I'm, oh, I'm gonna Lisa? intimidate him. I want okay. more. Uh, let me try roll intimidation real quick. I got a oh, nine. Oh shit! Oh man, I'm out of spell slots. Oh wait, okay, wait, okay. So I'm gonna burn a sorcery point, so I get a second okay. level. I'm oh, do I have to burn two? Don't die. You... To get the second level back. Um, I, I think so. Yeah. I will say that okay, for, for so streaming purposes burn... too. This is close to the end of today's session, so don't worry yeah. too much about burning stuff. Okay. So I'm gonna burn two spell slots to get a second level spell. Sorry, two sorcery points to get a second level spell slot back. And I'm gonna cast detect thoughts on. Spigo. Oh, okay. Uh, remind me exactly how that spell works, because I know there's a lot of text on that spell. Um. Yeah. It's. Da -da -da -da, uh, what does it say? Uh. If the creature he has an intelligence higher than three. Right? Yeah. Under three is like animals. Okay. Um. So questions verbally di directed at the target. Um. Target creature naturally shape the course of its thoughts. So this spell is particularly effective as a part okay. of interrogation. Cool. Um. Okay. I don't think it. Oh, I something wisdom wisdom saving throw. If it fails, um, we gain insight into its re reasoning. If any, its emotional state and something that looms large. Its emotional. Mind. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's actually very very helpful. Mm -hmm. So and something that looms large in its mind. All right. Um, does it, does it specifically say, like, how the, um, like, like, do you get, like, an image pops into your head, or do you get, does it, it doesn't it flavor, doesn't okay, then how. I'm gonna, okay, we'll say that. It knows, it's tar it says either way the target knows that you're Okay, I mean, Spigo's, he can't Unless do much about it. Attention is yeah. somewhere oh, else. Oh, and attention is somewhere else, because Glib is yeah. trying to scare the shit out of him. So, yeah, uh, Glib, do your, yeah. you said, what was your intimidation? Nine. Nine. All right, I'll um, Nine. I'll give him disadvantage since he's on the ground crying. Wait, hold on. Nope that that was I. That's that's not it. I accidentally ra uh, rolled insight, okay. not intimidation. Give me a minute. Rolling intimidation. <laughs> Twenty-four. Okay. I mean, I didn't even need, and he got a two. Shit out of him. He starts crying. Sweet. He he starts just straight up. 
he he kind of like tries to put on a sort of brave face for a second, <laughs> and then just starts bawling. Um, at this point, he's he's sort of blubbering and with his very gravelly goblin voice. It's it's very difficult to understand anything that he's saying. Mm. Luckily, SG is pulling it straight off of his mind, and you sort of get a mm-hmm. series of, of images. Um, since he's you know in sort of primal panic mode, okay. I'm going to say it's in images. And again, only SG okay. is getting this right now, but she can communicate it to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, you know, sort of just an image of Rift Reach into your mind first, which I guess I'll describe that real okay. quick for anyone curious. The architecture of Rift Reach is like sort of think like ancient, like Middle Eastern architecture, like like you know like the like the you sort of like Egyptian kind of architecture, but very tall, like sky, like New York City if it was made by the ancient Egyptians is sort of what Rift Reach looks like. Uh, and then uh, you get sort of an image of of Spigo going down into a tunnel, sort of just looking around. You get he wasn't looking for anything specific. He was just looting around, looking for anything interesting. And then it flashes very white in his mind, and you see an image of what looks like a portal of some kind, a portal that is made of the same sort of iridescent material that uh, that the shard is made out of. Mm-hmm. And you see Spigo's hand reach out and touch the portal, at which point it shatters mm-hmm. into a million of the shards of change glass that you are now holding. Oh, Jesus. Uh, you get this very uh. vague flash of something sort of coming from behind the portal, but it's not really much... Uh, and then just fear, just overwhelming fear from fills Spigo's mind as he books it out of this tunnel that he went under. Okay. Uh, and then, since Spigo, he knows you were reading his mind, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically. he kind of calms down after crying for a couple more minutes. He goes, "So I, so I grabbed the shard and I never went back." Okay. Thank okay. you, Spigo. <laughs> All right. Nice. <laughs> See you later. All right, just to, just to mm-hmm. fuck with him, just for an extra little bit of intimidation, uh, I'm gonna tell him do the same for here, and then since I have a tentacle for a tongue, I'm gonna lick his face. What is with you and licking things, <laughs> because it's fucking terrifying. It is. I mean, That's it is. Why. <laughs> that was I think, so intimate. For no, no, I think reason. it's. I think it would be because if I'm that close to him and the tentacle comes out of a frog well, mouth no. and licks me, I'm gonna be fucked. It has yeah. myself. That's it has why. nothing to do with the frog. When you say tentacle, it's like not just a long frog tongue. It's an actual tentacle. tentacle. You're, you yes. are all missing the a, most important is... part of this intimidation, which is, is this for Canyon or SG. This isn't. It's weird, but I don't think it's intimidating. But I would like to point out. You are basically tasting him right after he saw you suck the blood out of a guy. I think the vampire aspect yeah. is what makes it infinitely <laughs> scarier. Because he's interpreting it as you are tasting yeah. him before you eat him. Uh, so he's, he yep. screams and with a burst of adrenaline throws the corpse off of himself and runs away out of the cave. <laughs> Just before anybody can uh, catch him. I'd he like is to, gone. I'd like to congratulate him. Mm-hmm. I want to tell Glenn that was great. That was great. <laughs> and there we go. There. Thank you. And then I hand back the I hand back the pants well, shard. I'd also like to ask if someone could hand me the shard real quick. <laughs> Wait, like, no. What do you want to no, do with we it? We all know what he wants what to do. What do you want to do with it? I don't trust oh, you, man. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? I'm holding like it because I I guess I'm now the keeper of the shard. <laughs> I would like to lick it. I took it out of the bed. We licked everything else. That's it's gonna be a look. firm no from me. Let's go. <laughs> that's gonna be. That's a no, chief. Uh, that's... Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I'm assuming uh, you guys don't have any more business in the uh, in the underground fortress. We're good. No. We're good. All right. On that note, I believe that that is where we will end the first week session. You have your. Uh, your little beginning quest prompt in motion. There will be some other some other things that I will reveal next week and many weeks after. Next week as well, uh, Moose will be joining us. Moose's character is going to be uh, added to the party as well next week. This is gonna fit in. Yeah. So oh, like Moose's character is gonna be great. Is... I won't reveal. Uh, I, I won't reveal what Moose is playing yet. I'll I'll keep it as a surprise. But I know people did. Uh, I saw some people in the chat earlier saying like, "Oh, I hope Moose is X class." And I'm not going to say what, but people got it right. <laughs> people, people got uh, what Moose is playing correct. I think he's going to be very, uh, very, very popular. His oh. character is going to be going to be quite fun. Uh, but yeah, unless anyone has any other notes, I hmm? brought up 
Someone brought up in the comments another good point of how did Spigo get the shard back? Like, how does he hold the shard? In all honesty, we didn't. We have not confirmed that we can't touch it. We just know that if you get stabbed well, with the, it, you uh, turn can into Canyon that big picked it up and he started burning him after a little bit. I, why it's on the thing? I, I will say, oh, don't right, okay. don't overthink how he got it back. Like you guys just wrapped it up in fabric mm -hmm. and moved it just fine. So yeah, it's, okay. it's uh, you know, there's there's no reason to think that he could not do the same. Is what I'll say for now. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that is the uh, the beginning of the campaign. I hope everybody had fun. Awesome. I, I enjoyed it. I got to, to do a lot of cool stuff. Hell yeah. Uh, so I believe on that note, the ending of this is just sort of stream wrap up. So the video, the recording of this campaign for anyone who did not see this or is watching this late on Twitch or uh, is you know came in halfway through will be uploaded to YouTube at some point, probably at some point tonight. We're going to figure out how exactly that works. Mm -hmm. Actually, um... Uh, you're not you're not allowed to re-upload streams off of Twitch. I'm guessing you're an affiliate at this point. I'm an affiliate. Yeah, yeah. probably. If you're an affiliate, you're not allowed to upload streams off of Twitch uh, for up to 24 hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it'll either be uploaded tomorrow. Okay, thank or you for that heads up. Okay, so in that case, mm -hmm. no. Uh, I'm a, I'm going to be really busy tomorrow with something that I'll actually announce in a second. Mm -hmm. um, so Sunday, Sunday, uh, this stream will go up on YouTube. Um, actually, Panda, do you happen to have a link for the uh, the YouTube? Um, yeah, we're going right to put a now. link to the YouTube in the chat right now. Um, I will also link it on various platforms as well. We'll have that up so you guys can find it. Uh, but for my for my channel, because there's a lot of people here who are, are very, very new, uh, I stream other things on here quite a bit. I usually stream uh, various video games. Right now I'm playing Lego Marvel Avengers and uh, Bloodborne on Wednesdays and Saturdays. But tomorrow's stream is going to be special. Uh Tomorrow, beginning at 11 a.m., uh, and probably going the entire day, I am going to be live streaming the build of the entire LEGO Daily Bugle set, which is like 3,000 wow. pieces. It's going to be fun. It's going to suck for Jesus. me because it was going to be way longer than I thought it was, but I'm going through with it anyway. So tune in tomorrow pretty much at any point all day to watch me build LEGOs for an extremely long time. <laughs> I just posted the YouTube okay, link in the, perfect. Uh, the chat. Um, hmm? uh, some people are asking if we can cycle through the. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, let me. Actually, I was gonna also ask if you could, uh, if you could send those shots that you had, those like, screenshots. Uh, if you can send that to all of us, because then I'll. Yeah, I was actually, I was, oh, I was oh, gonna oh, tell you this after we, uh, after we ended the stream, but I'll go ahead and tell you. If you guys want like specific clips yep. or anything, message me and I'll get those out to you, um, for for yeah, various absolutely. marketing yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, I think I already gave you the logo I hope stuff. Somebody clipped the whole licking. Like nonsense. we have it. I mean, we have. Mm -hmm. the, we'll have the vod. I want. I want at least a nice, the most concise uh, part of the B thing. Yeah, for sure. I'm. I'm sure there's like a billion clips of the B thing. There are almost 500 people here, and it was higher during the B thing. So we'll we'll get some good clips. We'll get highlights. We'll figure that all out. Again, that might not be till hey, Sunday because I'm busy. Uh, this morning, but. Yeah. Matt, could you post the link? It got muted. Oh, in the I chat. yeah, I think I have link muting on for safety reasons. Um, can you? Yeah. Did you just put it to me on the Skype? Okay, cool. I heard the yeah. little notification. Okay, so I'm going to post a link to our YouTube right now. Um, there we go. Copy link. Okay, so in the chat, I mean this is a little bit delayed, uh, but coming now, there is the link to the Symmetry War. YouTube channel. Uh, obviously, if you're not following any of these fine people, you should be. I am, of course, at Sir Superhero on TikTok. Why am I tiny again? I, God damn it. I don't know. I'll figure out why Momo keeps ant manning all over the place. I, Nikhil Clayton, Momo Scary, at Panda Red. Next week, I'll also have a way to huh? make this better. So hopefully next week, I'll also have a way to keep my computer from dying halfway through. Yeah, we'll also have the uh, the fixes for the audio and everything because this was we had some first stream tech issues, which is pretty normal. Uh, but yeah, next week, at again, Friday at 4 p.m. Central Time, we will have session two for you guys. I hope everybody enjoyed today, and I am very excited for next week. Thanks for coming, everybody, and I will hopefully see a lot of you tomorrow. Uh, 